Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Steel Timber Sports German Championships. Today, we have the women and the rookies and intermediates competing on stage. There we see our two moderators taking care of business for us in German. On the left-hand side, we have Marcus Philipp and with him, Guido Husken, and they will be taking care of the live broadcast for our German audience today. My name is Troy Mannering. I'll be bringing you all the action from the English side of things, and we'll also go up to the main stage shortly to meet our stage moderator. And before that, we're going to take a short look at the area we're in here in uh, the Schierkenforstein Arena in Wernigerode in the beautiful area of Hearts. All right, so just a treat of what you're going to see tomorrow for our pro men's competition that's coming at you on Sunday. Make sure you turn in for that, and especially if you're a gas head and you like those loud saws, the hot saw is definitely your discipline. In the meantime, we're going to head up onto our main stage and introduce you to Tobias Witten. He's our stage moderator. He's going to be taking care of business on stage for the live audience here in the arena today. So as he said, uh, we are in the Schirke Feuerstein Arena where normally from November till the springtime in April, hockey is played, but there's going to be no hockey played here today. Today, we are concentrating on the Steel Timber Sports Women's German Championship and our Intermediate and Rookie German Championship as well. So we're going to start off as is proper ladies first and our German Women's Championship will be introducing our women to come on stage shortly and you'll see who all of the athletes are that will be participating. We have six wonderful athletes going to be competing on stage today. A couple of guest athletes here from other countries and three German athletes who will be competing for top honors in Germany. So as we get ready to go here with all the action at the Schirke Feuerstein Arena and Steel Timber Sports, we'll bring up our athletes on stage. All right, so our first athlete will be coming on stage, joining us from the Czech Eye or the, che uh, the Czech Republic, uh, or now they like to be called Czechia. This is Nadezda Bakvalova. This is her first ever competition in timber sports, so she will be dipping her toe into the competition arena today. Next coming up on stage, Juliana Einfeld from 
Austria will be seeing her shortly. There she is. She recently competed at the Nordic Championships, getting second place there as a guest athlete, and she will be participating here as well as a guest athlete. She has uh, fourth place at the Swiss Ladies Championship in 2021, fourth place at the Austrian International Cup 2021, and as I just said, second place at the Nordic Championships just a week ago. All right. Coming up next onto the stage, we have Yolanda Gnedinger coming from Switzerland. She had first place at the Austrian International Women's Cup in 2021. She's three-time Swiss champion, and uh, she is definitely one of the favorites to take a top spot here today if she can stay consistent throughout the day. All right, now our first German athlete coming up on stage, Nadine Munzenmeyer. She's uh, received first place at the Ford Ranger Cup this year for the women, second place at the German Championships in 2021, and second place at the Women's Cup in 2020. She's been a pretty consistent performer for the women along the way. And now coming up onto stage, one of the top favorites here for Germany, Alren Ubing. She has no less than two world records, one in Stocksaw and one in single buck for the women. The Stocksaw she got at the Women's Cup in 2020 and the single buck she got at the Ford Transit Cup in 2021. And our last athlete coming up onto stage today, Nina Pokoyski. She is the German champion from 19 and 21 for the women. And the first place, she got the first place at the French Women's Cup in 2022. So another very strong athlete looking to do well here today. This is a top field of women athletes. So we should be in for some fantastic competition on stage today. And of course, as always, we have our judges on stage. And I believe we're going to be seeing Dr. Jörg Kurzenberger up there as our head judge on stage. And Schul Janssen will also be on stage where normally he is our competition control center or head of competition control. And we'll see him on stage today. And I think that Bart Janssen will probably be taking over the duties in the competition control center. We'll talk a little bit more about that as the day goes on. But first things first, we're going to get into our first discipline and that is the stock saw. So let's take a look first at the format clip for this particular event today for our women. There will be three disciplines that the women will be participating in. At, uh, you'll see now how this works for the format. All athletes will compete in three disciplines. The maximum points awarded for each discipline result from the number of participating athletes. The first discipline is the stock saw. The fastest athlete will receive points equal to the total number of athletes competing down to one point for the last place in each discipline. The second event is the single buck. Points remain the same awarded based on the times and as with all events any rule infraction will result in a disqualification and the athlete will receive zero points for that discipline. In the final discipline the underhand chop it's the athlete's last chance to claim valuable points. The points from all disciplines are accumulated and the athlete with the highest points total wins the competition. All right, so there you go. That is our format for the competition today. So they will be on stage competing against each other, but it's more about the time that counts. And then the fastest time obviously creates the most points for each athlete. And then at the end of the competition, the athlete with the most points is your winner. Here is the stock saw. The steel MS661CM stock saw is used in steel timber sports as the ultimate test of operator skill. Designed for the toughest jobs in forestry, it produces approximately 7.3 horsepower, has a displacement of 91.1 cc and weighs 7.4 kilograms. To ensure evenly and fairly matched saws, professional steel technicians prepare and test the saws before each competition.
stock saw. After the starting shot, the contestants have to cut two wooden discs, so-called cookies, within a 10 centimeter mark. One downward and one upward. The attempt is only valid when both discs have been cut off completely and within the marks. All right, so let's take a look at the list, our starting list here for the stock. So we'll see Juliana Einfeld going up against uh, Nadezka, or, uh, Nadezda Bakvalova, get this name right one of these days soon. Uh, in heat number one, of course, Nina Pokoyski, Nadine Munzenmeyer going against each other in heat number two. And heat number three, Alren Übing and Yolanda Gnedinger. So Alren Übing has the world record and national record for stock saw with a 9.60 seconds. So she'll be looking to try and do well. But first, we've got to get through the first couple of heats. Heat number one, Juliana Einfalt going up against Nadezda Bakvalova. So here with these MS661 saws, as you saw from the description earlier, the saw is basically a flawless piece of machinery. It's about the operator in this case and being able to feel and hear the motor. Pushing too hard could stall that chain and Water. kill the time. Yes, Pushing no. not hard enough is going to make it slow through the blocks. Cutting two cookies is the option here or the object here. And right now, they'll get their saws started up. A quick warm-up, and then they'll place them in those specially designed rubber pads to keep them from hopping away. And then they'll make their first cuts. The competition is underway here between Juliana Einfalt and Nadezka Bakvaklova. timber. Three, two, one, go! Very good start by Juliana Einfeld. She's got a super thin first cookie. That's a nice cut right there. And that's one on the deck. Right now, Nadezda struggling a little bit to get that first cut, and a big, thick cookie for Juliana's second one. And that's an 11.52. That's a national record for Austria. Bakvalova is going to, oh, uh, having a little bit of trouble, and that's what I was talking about, pulling a bit too hard, the excitement really getting to her, and uh, she's got a national record for Czechia, and that's a great cut for her. A bit slower than the standard, but she's got her first competition cuts under her belt. She'll be happy about that as well, coming home with a national record. All right, both cuts are good. Oh, so there we go. Thumbs up from Dr. Jörg Kurzenberger, who is our head judge on stage today. And you'll see that quite often throughout the day. The judges are there to make sure that the cuts started properly and are done properly. And you can see here that first cut from Juliana. They say thin to win. Well, that was about as thin as it gets. The second cut a bit thicker, but inside the lines, nice and clean on the upstroke there. And you can see on the other side of the stage, Nadezda Bakvalova struggling a little bit on that first cut to try and get the flow. But as this is her first competition, we'll give her the benefit of the doubt as she'll be cutting her teeth or getting used to this competition arena and situation as time goes on. And that's a great job by her. And now we see heat number two line up for the stock saw. Nina Pokoyski going up against Nadine Munzenmeyer. Now, if you're online and on uh, Instagram at all and you follow Nadine, you see that she is busy, 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 constantly practicing and training and making sure that her skills are up to snuff. Nina Pokoyski doing the same thing. So this should be a really nice battle between these two women on stage right now. Now you see both of them are marking their cut points. They've got these special guides to make sure that they can set their cut points inside that 10 centimeter marking that they have for the stock saw. That's completely allowed and it's also a good way for them to make sure that they have their guidelines for those first cuts. It's very important to make sure that you're inside those guidelines but also that you have a nice thin cookie to have a clean and quick cut. Here we go. Warm up. Yes, sir. So for Nina, a couple of test strokes there just to make sure she's got her timing and muscle memory. For Ready. Nadine, it seemed like she's Ready. pretty confident about this heat. So Stand let's go. to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Oh, very nice start from Munzenmaya. 
She got up there quick. Pekoyski, though, she's got a great first cut, checking that up swing and the up cut. It's looking good for Munzenmeyer with a great time of 10.70. Pekoyski with a 12.11. Munzenmeyer was very quick to get up on top of that first cut. Great job. Let's make sure that those cookies are good, and she looks relieved to have those cuts done. So the tension before is like the tension after, before the start and waiting right, for the decision. Good. So we have both cuts are good. The cookies on the deck count, and that means we have some good times in the books for both Heat 1 and Heat 2 for our women in the stock saw. So look at that. That first cut from Nadine Munzenmeyer was great. You can see the different styles here, too. Nina Pokoyski going for a bit more of an angle on the saw. And, oh, that upcut was very close to being out. But how thin was that second cookie on the bottom? Wow, that was a risky upcut by Nadine, but a well-done cut nevertheless. All right, last heat coming up in the stock saw. Heat number three with Alren Übing going up against Yolanda Gnedinger. Yolanda just recently uh, tying the knot and getting married to Pierman Gnadinger, also a very well-known Swiss timber sports athlete. So uh, there is the sport in the family, as it were. Alren Ubing, as I mentioned off the top of the show, is the world record and national record holder for the stock saw for women, and that is a 9.60 time. So she's got a bit of an advantage here as far as time is concerned going up against Yolanda Gnadinger who has an 11.60 or a 10.60 best time. And Alren Ubing definitely one of the top favorites here. She recently was the number one in the Sorry, just a small... Uh, Technical dropout there. Alren Ubing just recently won the Nordic Championships for women. So top spot there for her as uh, a way of also getting ready for these German Championships here in Wernigerode in the beautiful Harz area of Germany. There we see Yolanda. Last minute checks to make sure everything is good to go. Turning off that chain break. And two different Ready. styles here as far as getting Ready. set to. Watch the saws. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Oh, fantastic start by Ubing. She's got a pretty thick cookie, though. And it looks like those were both going to drop at about the same time. This is a nice cut up for Yolanda. And she's got this one with a great time of 11.65. Alrun with a 12 even. These are, of course, unofficial times until our judges give the thumbs up and competition control makes any final adjustments. But for the moment, that was a great cut by Yolanda Gnadinger. Ooh, but she might have cut over the line there. It's going to be a very, very close call. Let's see what the judge says. Good. All right, so she just got lucky on the up cut on her second cut there, Yolanda. So she is in with a safe cut, but it was very close to the line. And that is all she wrote for our women in the stock saw event. Three heats done and dusted. And you can see how fast it happens right there. And our stage crew will get up on stage and prepare things as we take a look at the replay. Now that was a beautiful quick start by Aldrin. And we can see here that was also a pretty good start by Yolanda. You can see how she dips the tip of the saw down and her style is a little bit different and a very nice transition to the upcut, but the angle on that close side to the motor was very, very close to the line. And here you see Alrun Ubing on her final upcut, pretty clean on both of them. So here we have our rankings, stock saw. Nadine Munzenmeyer with a season's best, 1060. She gets three points out of the mix here. Alrun Ubing in second place there and Pokoyski in third. We're talking about the German athletes that are competing here. Einfalt and Bakvalova, both with national records. So that's a fantastic result for them as well. So there we have it. Heat, or excuse me, discipline number one in the books. As uh, we just took, 
a close look at those rankings, and that will mean those will be the overall rankings for the moment as well, with Nadine Munzenmeyer at the top of the list. Now, you'll see that the other athletes, our guest athletes from Czechia and Austria and Switzerland, are not ranked in the overall when we do see the list. So just so that there's no confusion here, because this is the German championships, only the German athletes will be ranked. So at the moment, Nadine Munzenmeyer at the top, just ahead of Alren Ubing and Nina Pokoyski bringing up the last place in the German group in third place. So now we will move on to our next discipline. But before we do that, we will also get a look back at one of the original. This is what you would consider one of the original extreme sports as our stage crew in the background there you could see uh, working hard. This is, as I said, one of the original extreme sports. And let's take a look back at how it all started. So, of course, you can always check out Steel Timber Sports online on YouTube and, of course, on Facebook if you're interested in following. And uh, naturally, you can also go and uh, check out Teal Stimber Steel Timber Sports, excuse me, their main web page to find out all about the athletes and the locations and the competitions and um, what's happening in the next weeks and months. Now, this event here this weekend, the German Championships, will be the last official event uh, in Germany for the season. Then we'll move on to Switzerland for the Swiss National Championships. And while we're down there, we'll also have the Nations Cup. And then that will do it for the season overall before we head to the final big event of the season in October. And that is the World Championships. And now we're moving on to the single buck. Cut saw used for the single buck discipline is made especially for competition. A series of consistently patterned 10 centimeter long teeth are cut with a laser on one side of the saw and then hand sharpened. Saw teeth are divided into two types, cutters and rakers, just like on the old school saws. The saw weighs about five kilos and its base price starts at around 1,500 euros. Single buck. The single buck is a one-man saw about two meters long. With this, the athletes have to cut off a complete disc from a 40 centimeter thick wooden block. The perfect interplay between rhythm and strength is the key to success. All right, so here we have our start lift for the single buck, and uh, as you'll see, it'll uh, get mixed up a little bit here. Uh, Bakvalova will go up against Julian Einfalt in heat number one, Munzenmeyer against Gnedinger in heat number two, and Pokoyski and Übing in heat number three. And as you see, the world record is 15.62 for our women. And lo and behold, also held by Germany's Alren Übing. So a lot sits on her shoulders to try and catch up to these times today. But in the meantime, we're going to go up to heat number one for Nadezda Bakvalova up against Juliana Einfalt. 
Now, another name that they uh, often use for this particular single buck saw, the two-meter long crosscut saw, is the misery whip. Why? Well, that's a great question, folks. It can make you miserable if that saw stops mid-cut. Now, as this is Nadezda's first competition, we may see a bit of those jitters unless she's been really practicing this particular discipline to be adept at it. And there you can see the saw from Juliana Einfeld. That is one of the best designs ever with that shark tooth up front. Such a cool saw. I like it a lot. So here we go. Effie, ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. All right, Juliana Einfeld with a great start. You can see Bakvalova a little bit choppy on her start, just using the back half of the saw. And on the other side of the stage, you can see Juliana really utilizing the full length of that saw to try and get nice, clean, efficient, long strokes. And there you can see she's got a helper on stage, placing that wedge at the top of the block there to make sure that it doesn't bind on the saw. It looks like we're going to have a pretty good time by Juliana Einfeld with a 25-27 so that's the time that's logged in there. And here we see Bakvalova, very, very short, choppy strokes. And this is all about trying to figure out the style that you're going to use here for this particular discipline. This will cut, but it'll take a long time to cut through. And this is why right now it's becoming a miserable moment for her as she gets through the bottom in 49.75. And again, she'll lock in a women's national record. A great job by her, first competition ever. So... This is an opportunity here, as we've said, right from the top of the show to really get some experience and gain that trust in yourself. All right, both cuts are good. So there you see Bakvalova with a 49-4-3 a and Juliana Anfalt with a 24-9-3. As we take a look back here, you can see the difference even at this angle here. Juliana in the far side of your screen going for long strokes. And here, Nadezda just really a bit too short and choppy. And so that's just not an efficient cut style and a nice finish by Juliana Anfalt. Great job. All right, next up. Nadine Munzenmeyer going up against Yolanda Gneringer. Both of them very strong in this discipline. Yolanda spends quite a lot of time with the single buck, though, and she's quite solid in this discipline as well. All right, I think our uh, commentators here, including myself, might have a little competition on the demo single buck that they have here today. At least that's what... Uh, Guido Huskin said to me earlier, so it looks like Guido and Marcus and Tobias and I will uh, be jumping on that, and uh, hopefully somebody will film it. We can put that online. No promises, though, folks. No promises at all. We'll just see how it goes. It could be fun. And in the meantime, we've got this heat between Nadine Munzenmeyer and Yolanda Gnedinger getting ready to go as they set their saws in place and make the first initial lineup cuts there. You can see how aggressive these cutting teeth are just with a couple of small strokes there from Yolanda as she sets her saw in place. And right there, I do believe that is Shul Janssen checking it with that guide to make sure that she is in place. And now she'll make sure that that saw is safely set in her start position and ready to go. You can also see there with Nadine Munzenmeyer, she's got a set of spiked shoes on. And uh, those spiked shoes will add just that little bit of extra grip on this floor in order to be able to really draw and push that saw through the block. All right. Effie, ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Good start by both of these women. Really looking good. Nadine Munzenmeyer a bit flat on her cut, then Gnedinga going a bit deeper, and she's really putting everything she's got into it, getting a lot of encouragement there from the sidelines. 
as well, and she's looking good. More than halfway through the block, Yolanda Gnadinger with a really nice cut here as she just passes the 20-second 20 20 mark. Oh, my goodness, she's got a huge tongue left there. That was an unfortunate break for her. She's got to set that saw back in place and make sure that last little tab gets cut off. Otherwise, it's called a DQ. Looks good for her. Munzenmaya struggling to get that final cut, and she had a bit of a stick there at the end because of the angle, but she did get it through. It looks like all the cookies are fair here at the end of the day. We'll see what the judge says, uh, Dr. Jörg Kutzenberger, when he does check everything and make sure it's all good if we have fair cuts. Okay, both cuts are good. All right, so Yolanda lucky to have that good clean cut there. Nadine Munzenmeyer a little bit slow down on the last bits of of her final cut as she struggled with the angle of the saw slightly, and maybe we'll see that in the slow-mo, uh, but that was a tough break-off. Literally, that uh, cookie broke off at the bottom of the cut for Yolanda, and that's a difficult situation to be in. Is You want to have a nice thin cookie so that it doesn't bind on the saw as much, and you can see here for Yolanda, she was really putting a lot of effort in that saw, bending ever so slightly. And here we see, this is Nadine Munzenmeyer. She's got a bit of a thicker cookie, so the risk of it breaking off is lower. It's right here, a little bit of a twist by the saw, and that came off for Yolanda. And then she had to set the saw in place again to make sure that last tongue or that last tab of wood was cut off in order to make sure that there was a complete cookie with check. And there it is, and that killed her time. You could see she was definitely very unsatisfied with that as we get going with our third heat. Nina Pokoyski going up against Aldrin Ubing. So the two German women getting ready to lock horns with each other in single buck on stage here. And as I said, she does have the world record and national record with 15.62 seconds. Now based on what we've seen here today, the times aren't really mega fast, so it could be the wood isn't cutting super quick today. There might be a little bit more moisture in the wood. So it's hard to say. You know, the wood is always fairly distributed through these athletes through a special system of harvesting and distribution to make sure that each athlete has fair competition wood. We'll find out more about that later in the day as well. So Nina Pokoyski just uh, making a note of something on the wood there making sure that everybody is aware of the situation. I don't think it's anything untoward. And there we see Alren Ubing getting ready to place her saw. Once again, if you're just joining us, we're here in Werdingerode in the beautiful Harz region of Germany at the Schirke Feuerstein Arena. And this is the German Women's Championship 2022 for Steel Timber Sports. Later today, we'll have the intermediates and rookie athletes on stage. And then tomorrow on Sunday, our pro men will be competing for the top spot and a spot at the individual world championships coming up at the end of October on the 28th and 29th of October in Gothenburg, Sweden. So saw setting now by Alrun Ubing, and you can see the metal piece in Schul Janssen's hand is to check the depth of the saw cut. And that was a really nice practiced hand right there from Alrun to get that saw depth cut exactly right with just a couple, three strokes. And now she'll place that saw to make sure it's exactly where she wants it to be for the first draw cut when she starts the heat here against Nina Pakoyski. So that is a thin right. starting spot there Ready. for her. So less Ready. binding on the saw, but she needs Stand to know to your that's timber. a risk at the Three, bottom of the cut two, for a breakout. One, Let's see, go. we go. 
Oh, and the full pull, but a big stick by Alrin Ubing causes a bit of problem with the time as she finally gets into the flow. Nina Pokoyski, meanwhile, is getting through to the halfway point of her cut, looking very good. So the worry about what was happening with her wood there at the start seems to be unfounded. But Alrin Ubing now struggling a little bit as she sees through the corner of her eye that it is Nina Pokoyski having a good cut. But it's Alrin Ubing with a 23.63, Nina Pokoyski with a 25.81. So Alrin struggled off the hop there. A good pull back to start the saw, but then the push through, she got hooked up and stuck a little bit. And that's one of the reasons why they call this the misery whip, because if it does get stuck, it is a bear to restart and it really saps your energy. Okay. okay. Both cuts are good. So fair cuts across the board. Alrin Ubing there you could see had the fastest time in the single buck with assistance. So she has the three points there. And that means she will take over the top spot in the overall rankings with five points total. Nadine Munzenmaier with a first place and a third place in the competition so far. Five points total in second. And Nina Pokoyski with three points sitting in third place. And there you could see in the replay here, Alrin struggling to try and find the flow on those push cuts. Uh, Nina Pokoyski got good flow right away, but you can see she's not using the entire length of the saw. And these are all things that will, these athletes will go back. They'll look at film footage of their cuts, their racing uh, runs here, and they'll try and think about things that they can do to try and improve. So here we see the single buck results. Alrin Ubing on the top with Nina Pokoyski in second place and Nadine Munzenmaier in third place for our German athletes, getting points three to and one buck Valova mit a na with a national record, excuse me, with a 49.43. And you know that's going to improve as time goes by. And she gets a little bit more experience under her belt in the competition arena. And here we take a look how the overall standings have shifted. So Munzenmeyer drops down to second place with Aldrin Ubing in the top spot and Nina Pakoyski in third place for the moment with one more event still to come. All right, so there we see our two German moderators, Guido and Marcus, talking a little bit about the discipline and what's happened up on stage there as we get ready for the underhand chop. Our crew has the stage already set, and here this is uh, a little bit more about that. You'll find out from the discipline clip that is coming up shortly here. Before we take a look at that discipline clip, though, we will take a quick look at uh, one of our partners to say thank you for all their help because these events would not happen without our various partners. So let's check that out right now. Aufgabe gewachsen mit Akkupower von Stiel. Jetzt bei Ihrem Stielfachhandel und auf Stiel.de. Well, there you go. If you need garden work done, then you've got the right equipment with Stiel. And of course, uh, these uh, tools and toys, if you're one of the guys like me that loves that kind of stuff, is great to have in your garage or in your garden shed. Uh, but one of the things that you can't buy at your local dealerships is the axe that the actual athletes will be using in our next discipline, and that is the underhand chop. Let's check that out. The axes used in timber sports definitely can't be bought at your local hardware store. Made from special steel, the blade is hand sanded with an angle of 13 to 16 degrees. It's custom built 
and carefully adjusted for each competition. The weight is around three kilos and it's about 80 centimeters long. The blade is so sharp that you could shave with it. Underhand chop. In the past, the underhand chop technique was used to split logs. Standing on a horizontally anchored block, the athletes cut with the axe through a 27 centimeter log. The block has to be worked from both sides. Okay, so here we have our start list for the underhand chop. And once again, it is all about cutting through that block from both sides. 31 is the season's best world record also. That is held by Amanda Beams from Australia. The national record belongs to Alrin Ubing. I mean, who else? She's got all the other records. Why not this one? Her national record is 38.79 seconds. So our first heat coming up will be between Juliana Einfalt and Nadezda Bakvalova. Nadezda representing Czechia very well today out there on stage. Her first ever competition. And there you see the tool that these women will be using to cut through that block. That is an incredibly dangerous piece of equipment. I managed to have one just touch my thumb and I felt like it was going to cut my thumb off. It is unbelievably sharp, these axes. Now here you could see clearly on Nadezda's legs are chain mail socks. All athletes have right. to. They are required by the rules Andy. to wear these socks for safety. Ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. So a good start by Juliana, who has a little bit of pedigree here as far as this discipline is concerned. She's well practiced here. Nadezhda, on the other hand, she's doing a great job with her first few drivers into the block. She's got some nice chips coming off there. Juliana, she's slabbing out more than anything. She's got some big pieces coming off there. So we should see Juliana switch to the other side fairly quickly. Nadezhda is uh, doing a nice job on the first side of hers as Juliana switches over to the second side and starts to work on the front side of her block. And there you can see a really close up view of those chain mail socks. They go all the way down around the toes, and this is definitely a requirement here for this discipline because while the saw, or excuse me, while that axe will probably break a toe on impact, it will not cut through that chain mail. So that's a very important safety feature that all athletes will wear because they do wear very soft shoes on those blocks in order to be able to have good grip and balance. Nadezhda just moving over to the other side of her block now as Juliana should be coming close to splitting hers any second now. It looks like it's wiggling and waggling. She's got some nice blows, nice drivers coming through that side. It's bouncing a little bit, though. Her angle has changed, but she is through in 112.79. That's a pretty heavy time for Juliana Einfeld with a personal best as well under a minute with 47.83. But she is through as Nadezda trying to get through in the allotted amount of time. There is a time limit. Ah, there we go. Just exceeded that time limit. So unfortunately for her, she just wasn't quite fast enough. But again, this is her first ever competition and they will definitely want to make sure that uh, they give her the opportunity to battle it out here and gain that experience, which is so incredibly important when you're competing in steel timber sports. Okay, Juliana, Juliana your cut is good. Nadeshta, CQ. You missed the time. So unfortunately, our first and only disqualification of the day for our women, and that uh, belongs to Nadezhda Bakvalova with an exceeded the time limit DQ. Uh, but again, these are situations that she's going to take back to the bank and remember and work on how to improve and make those cuts faster. Uh, for Juliana, she had a good time or at least a fair time, and uh, that counted to make sure that she has points in the bank here as she works towards finding a good position after this final discipline. You can see here, 
Those last couple of drivers by Juliana to get through and stepping off the block safely with a wave to the crowd. Now coming up to heat number two with Yolanda Gnadinger up against Nina Pakoyski. Based on their times, should be a pretty even heat between these two. Under 50 seconds for both of them, 44-46 and a 43-53. So the national record, as we see there, 38-79 belongs to Alrun Ubing and the world record, a 31 even belonging to Amanda Beams from Australia. I mentioned that off the top. That's going to be a tough one to beat. Amanda Beam's a tiny woman, but she is a power package. She really does a great job on the chopping disciplines, but that's saying nothing against any of the women that are here today, in particular these two that are going to come on stage for the underhand chop now. And here we have a couple of experienced athletes getting ready to battle it out. All right, Effie, ready. Stand, Stand to your to timber. Your timber. Three, two, one, go! So aiming for the pre-swing. The pre-swings came in a little bit later than I thought they would, but both of these women are really getting into it with pretty frequent drivers going into the block. Yolanda Gnadinger, a nice big slab coming out, two of them now, and on the other side, Pekoyski doing the same thing. This is going to be a good heat between these two, already seeing some great speed, nice accuracy there on a few of those drivers as that first side is getting well worked on both of these blocks, and we should see them coming over to the other side any second now. A little slip there by Pekoyski as Gnadinger now moves over to the other side. Ginger steps by Pekoyski to move on to her second side, and she is about three strokes behind Yolanda Gnadinger on that second side. Big slab coming out, though, for Pekoyski as she works that block well. Gnadinger, same thing. A few big chips coming out for her now, too, as the audience here really... Encouraging these two women on stage and uh, it's getting deeper on both of these cuts. Who's going to cut their block first as we break into the nearly minute mark and it's going to be Pokoyski with a 101.55. So the wood's cutting a little bit slower for our women today as Yolanda is struggling now to try and get through there and she's really working those heavy drivers. Oh, losing a bit of balance there and finally swings through with a 114.85 coming very, very close to the time limit of 130. So neither of these women will be super satisfied with the times here today because they both have times that are under 50 seconds normally. So their personal bests haven't really been uh, at risk here today. Okay, both cuts are good. So waves all around for Yolanda and Nina as they'll exit the stage and the stage crew will get out there and quickly clean up and change the blocks so that we can get our heat number three on stage as quickly as possible. We always have to give big props out to our stage crew. They have such an important job to make sure that that stage is switched as quickly as possible for our athletes and for our audience so that we can keep the action going and flowing as we take a look back at the slow-mo here. Some nice drivers there from Nina Pakoyski. You can see pretty accurate hits each time around, and that's very important to get that angle and that accuracy because when you have that accuracy and that angle, you're just cutting a little bit more efficiently, which means you're cutting faster. In this case, though, the blocks might have just been a little bit slower for our women on stage today. You can see Yolanda there. The last driver, she uh, had to take a little bit of a rebalance to get herself set, and the stage looks like it is ready to go for our final heat for our women in the underhand chop and for our women today, and that is Aldrin Ubing up against Nadine Munzenmeyer. So you can see the difference in personal best times here. But as I mentioned off the top of the show, Nadine Munzenmeyer has been training like a beast to make sure that she is on point with all the different disciplines that are going to be battled out here today. So we could see a good surprise run from Nadine, but the times have been a little bit slower in general. So... I don't know if either one of these women will be getting their personal bests. I always like to see that as, of course, uh, means that we're seeing improvement. But the question is, 
Will the wood cooperate? From time to time, I'll be doing a show with uh, Yolanda Gnedinger, and I asked her about all the different axes she has, and she said she's got many, but wouldn't tell me exactly how many. So it's a little bit like your, you know, the mountain bike guys out there. How many bikes do you have? A few. Um, but what she did tell me is that there are different types of axes that you can use for different wood conditions. So some of them are really, really fine point cutting axes. Some of them are a little more chisel-like. We'll cut out bigger pieces of wood when the wood isn't cooperating. So this is also a big decision, is deciding on what axe you're going to use on a given day based on what you've seen so far. So the advantage for Aldrin and Nadine here is they've seen the other women on stage do their underhand chop, and they could have made that decision prior to coming out knowing that the Eddie. wood is cutting a bit slower. Here we go. Eddie. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. So Alrin Ubing already holding her axe well on high, and you can see both of them, Nadine and Alrin, getting in there with some pretty heavy and quick drivers. The thing about Alrin, though, is she's a very accurate hitter here. A little twist of the axe there as uh, she's getting in there. You see the angle now with Nadine Munzenmeyer. Also really good, looking a little bit deep on that one cut there, but she gets back on line with those ones, and uh, I think we're going to see both of them move to the other side fairly quickly here as Nadine Munzenmeyer in the blue shoes there and her chainmail socks takes the steps to get to the other side. All renewing over on the other side, about two strokes ahead of Munzenmeyer now as we are now on the second side facing the audience. Who's going to come through and what's the time going to be for both of these women? They're looking good as they're getting close to the 50-second mark here. And I think we'll probably be around a minute for both of these ladies. Alrin looking like she's a bit deeper than Nadine at this point. A little bit of a hop by the axe there from Alrin Ubing. And Nadine Munzenmeyer now looks like she's playing a good game of catch up here. It may be that Munzenmeyer gets through ahead of Ubing and she does a 108.71. That's a nice reaction from Nadine Munzenmeyer. And as I said, no best times here today as the wood is not cooperating. Alrin really struggling on the second side of her block here as she's getting close to the timeout limit and that would be unfortunate for her because that would mean no points and she's got to get through there a second. Oh no, a DQ for Alrin Ubing and that means zero points here and that may change the overall standings drastically here as Nadine Munzenmeyer with the second fastest time just behind Nina Pokoyski with two points should move into the top of the ranking, but we'll see once we have everything calculated here. Oh, that was a tough day for Alrin on the underhand chop. All right. Stand one, Alrun. Out of time, unfortunately, DQ. Nadine, your cut is good. Okay, so there we see uh, Alrin Ubing out of time, DQ. Nadine Munzenmeyer with a time of 108.34 puts her in second place. Let's take a look back here at the... Uh, First cuts on the first side and some nice slabs coming out there for Nadine as she got the axe caught pretty deep on a power driver there, but then she did manage to get through and Alrin, it was just these last few drivers that got a bit sticky on her and she couldn't get through in the allotted time. All right, so the underhand chop ranking there, we have two limits, time limits exceeded DQs. Nina Pokoyski with the fastest time in the underhand chop. Let's see what that does in the overall standings. Oh, interesting. Mikoyski was sitting in third place, but due to the DQ of Alrin Ubing has six points tied with Munzenmeyer and Ubing with five points. But because of the faster time, she is the winner. And we're going to hear from her right now.
So she says she's very proud of herself. She's still trying to get a little bit of air because of she's a little bit out of shape at the moment, but uh, she's pretty proud that she's managed to defend her title as the German champion. So the question was, uh, did she want to get the triple and uh, get it three times in a row? And Yep, and she says, yeah, she's really surprised and uh, very, very proud that she's got that three times in a row. So a great job and big applause for Nina Pokoyski, your 2022 Women Steel Timber Sports German Champion. So surprising that uh, Alrun Ubing with that DQ didn't manage to get through in the time. And uh, normally she's very, very strong in this discipline. But by virtue of that DQ, she managed only third place today. Nadine Munzenmeyer has been hovering around the first and second place as the day went on. But Nina Pokoyski with a really nice come from behind win. She was in third place after the second discipline. And it was the big question if she didn't get a good time in the underhand chop and had Alrin Ubing managed to get through, then Alrin would have had the points needed in order to take the top spot on the podium today. But unfortunately, it was not her day in underhand chop. And that was the difference maker for this event. The underhand chop was the faster Nina Pokoyski with a 101.22. Nadine Munzenmeyer with a 108.34, and by virtue of the DQ from Alrin Ubing, she managed a third place here today. So we'll see her in the bronze medal position on the podium with Nadine Munzenmeyer taking silver and Nina Pokoyski doing it three times in a row as the German women's champion in teal, steel timber sports. So a great effort here today by all of our women, in particular the three German athletes who will we see shortly on stage for our awards ceremony. What we will do is we'll bring all the athletes out on stage, all six women, including our guest athletes who also performed exceptionally well today. Speaking of them, that's Yolanda Gnedinga, Nadezda Bakvalova and Juliana Einfeld. So Nadezda, her first competition ever. So that's a great job by her to come out here on stage and battle it out and try and get those points and that experience, that all-important experience. So let's bring out all of our athletes one more time onto the stage here at the Schirke Feuerstein Arena. So here come our athletes on stage again. Uh, first out is Nadezda Bakvalova, her first ever competition. So she'll be very, very proud to have been out there and gotten national records for women from Czechia. And of course, she gets herself a medal. And then we have Juliana Einfeld from Austria coming out. She'll join Nadezda. And uh, then from Switzerland, Yolanda Gnedinger will join. Always a big smile on her face. All right, and now we will bring out the top three athletes starting in third place for our German championship. In third place, Alrin Ubing. And obviously disappointed with the underhand chop today, but she'll take away a bronze medal as she steps out onto stage here and will take third place in the competition this weekend. Very well done.
So there you see Alren Ubin, third place, German Women's Championship 2022. Next up, we'll bring up Nadine Munzenmaya, who will take second place and the silver medal here today. So the runner-up German champion. And yeah, let's forget about the handshakes and just give hugs all around. That's a good way to go. That uh, never hurts. So Nadine Munzenmaier taking second place here today with a very, very solid performance. Getting a first, a third, and a second in the competition. Exactly the same positions as Nina Pakoyski. Just by virtue of timing, though, Nina Pakoyski a little bit faster in the overall. And therefore... Even with the tied six points, takes the top spot. But right now, needed Nadine Munzenmaier with second place here at the German Women's Championship 2022. All right, now our winner three times in a row, Nina Pakoyski, is the standing and new defending horror title as women, German women's champion. Again, in 2022, great job by Nina. She had a solid underhand chop. Single buck, she was in second place. In Stocksaw, she was a little bit slower. But it counted in the end for a good result for her. Top spot and the gold medal. So an 1191 in the Stocksaw. Third place there. And a 25.51 in single buck, a second place there. And, of course, the 101.22 time in the underhand chop and a first place there. And that was good enough for the top spot on the deck today, the number one position on the podium, and your reigning German champion for women holds on to that spot one more time. Good job, as. Yolanda tries to find space for the picture. All right, so there you have it. That is all she wrote for our gym and Women Championship 2022. We will get ready to go into the rookie and newcomer competition, the intermediates and the rookies on stage next as... Our women will enjoy, unfortunately, no champagne shower. We'll do that with everybody a little bit later on. We want to make sure that stage stays safe as uh, we bring out our next athletes on stage in just a few minutes' time. So don't go away. We'll be back with the Newcomer Championship and the rookies on stage at the same time shortly. Hang tight. All right, so we hope you guys enjoyed our women's competition today. As I said, there is plenty of action still to come on the day. Make sure you hang out. In about five minutes' time, we'll be up there with the rookies and the intermediates and our newcomers. So don't go away and enjoy these last images from our women's competition. Hang tight. See you in a few.
Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the German Newcomer Championship 2022. And uh, there you see on stage right now our two German announcers, Marcus Philipp and Guido Huskin. We'll be taking care of our German audience today. We'll meet Tobias Witten, our stage announcer, a little bit later on. In the meantime, we'll welcome you uh, very much to the Schirke Feuerstein Arena here in Wenigerode in the beautiful Hearts area of Germany for our German Newcomer Championship 2022. Now, what does German Newcomer Championship actually mean? Well, what it means here is we have some rookies and some intermediate athletes competing on stage together. We'll see five different disciplines, springboard, stock saw, standing block chalk, single buck, and underhand chop. And the order will be mixed up and moved around a little bit today as a, uh, the safety levels of the athletes and uh, other factors are taken into consideration for who can participate in what. In the meantime, let's check out the location where we are here in Venga Order. All right, so uh, Danny Martin will be competing in the pro competition tomorrow for, hopefully for him, a spot in the individual world championships coming up at the end of October in Sweden. Uh, but that is tomorrow. Make sure you tune in for that. It's going to be a fantastic competition. In the meantime, we have the German Newcomer Championship 2022 with the rookies and the intermediate athletes going to be stepping on stage shortly. But before that, we're going to meet our stage moderator, and that is Tobias Witten up on the main stage. And he'll be taking care of the live audience here at the Schirke Feuerstein Arena in Wernigerode. So on stage right now being shortly introduced are the two stage judges, Dr. Jörg Kurzenberger and Schul Janssen. They'll be taking care of the official duties on stage today. Before that uh, competition can get going, we have to make sure those two guys are ready to go and they are on stage. And now we are going to meet our 11 athletes that will come on stage and be competing today along with our guest athletes. And first out of the gate here, Nicolas Oliva from France. So he's got 10th place at the uh, French 
Newcomer Championship in 2018, eighth place at the French Rookie Cup in 2019. Next up, joining him, a country mate, Vincent Roussel, 24 years young. He'll be in the rookies this season, and then next season he will either jump to intermediate or decide to go up to the pro level. Third place at the French Rookie Championship this year, so a solid showing from him. Then we have Josef Keshek from uh, Czechia. Ninth place at the Czech Rookie Cup in 2021. Been working on his uh, weaknesses to increase that and make them strengths coming up into this competition here. Jan Reikert also he is not considered a rookie this time. He is an intermediate at 26 years of age. He is outside of the rookie age, but he uh, eighth place at the Ford Transit Cup in 2022 as a newcomer. Now coming up onto stage, Max Schups. He's an intermediate at 27 years of age. Fifth place at the Ford Ranger Cup in 22. Uh, he also got seventh at the Transit Cup in 2022. Joining them on stage, Leon Pesch, 21 years old, fourth place at the Ford Ranger Cup uh, newcomer competition in 2022. And he did a lot of training over the past winter in order to make sure that he was on point for today. Coming up now, Tim Anthofer, 23 years old, competing in the rookie division, coming out of Rotenburg in Baden-Württemberg. And he is studying forestry, so he is right in his element here. Fourth place at the Ford Transit Cup 2022. And in 2021 was his first competition ever. Peter Wurzberger, a little bit of an older guy here. Call him an intermediate at 41 years of age, but he's in the mix, and it makes us older fellas feel like maybe there's hope to compete and uh, be in the mix as a competition uh, Timber Sportler, yeah, down the road maybe. Third place at the Ford Ranger Cup in 2022. Joining him on stage now, Alexander Heinz, 31 years old, coming uh, from uh, Ransbach in the Rheinland-Pfalz. Second place at the German Championship 2019 as a newcomer. Second place at the Ford Ranger Cup 2022. And third place at the Ford Transit Cup 2022. Of course, all of those newcomer competitions and then our last couple of athletes coming up onto stage. Dietmar Schlesinger, 36 years of age, fourth place at the German Championships 19 and 21. First place at the Ford Transit Cup in 2022. So he's the guy that a lot of people are going to be keeping an eye on in the intermediate division. And then, of course, the man with the massive fan club here, Danny Fielwert. He is also competing officially in the intermediate division here. 25 years old, second place at the German Championship in 21, first place at the Ford Ranger Cup in 22, second place at the German Championship 2021, uh, second place at the Ford Transit Cup 2022. So, yeah, he's got uh, a bit of a pedigree, and he's got his fan club. If we do get a picture of the audience, it's all those people out there with the yellow hats as we pan by our athletes here and get ready for our German Newcomer Championship 2022. So as you saw with the women competition, if you uh, tuned in earlier on, there are also guest athletes here for our Newcomer Championship as... Uh, we like to have as many people competing as possible. In the meantime, let's take a look at the competition format for this particular discipline. There's been some changes here, so this will give you a little bit of clarification. Also, das riecht ganz, ganz klar nach Revanche heute. Wir sind gespannt auf dieses Duell zwischen diesen beiden Athleten. Und wir steigen direkt ein ins Wettkampfgeschehen. Und zwar mit der ersten Disziplin, an der nur drei Athleten teilnehmen, denn man braucht entsprechend noch ein paar Herausforderungen, man muss noch ein paar ähm, ja, Trainings absolvieren. Aber bevor wir euch diese Disziplin zeigen, wollen wir euch erstmal erklären, wie denn das Ganze hier vom Wettkampf her abläuft. Also es geht darum, wie werden die Punkte gesammelt und wie kommt man am Ende in Gesamtranking dann auf seinen entsprechenden Platz. Das zeigen wir euch jetzt.
The Steel Timber Sports Newcomer Competition. All athletes compete against each other in five disciplines, provided they have safety clearance for the respective disciplines. The maximum number of points awarded for each discipline depends on the number of athletes taking part. The first discipline is springboard with one board. The fastest athlete receives points equal to the total number of participating athletes, except for one point for last place in each discipline. There are no points for disqualification. In the second discipline, the participants compete in stock saw. The third discipline is the standing block chop. And in the fourth discipline, each participant has to prove their ability in the single buck. The last discipline, the underhand chop, is the last chance for athletes to collect valuable points. The points from all disciplines are then totaled, and the athlete with the highest number of points wins the competition. So there you go. That is our format clip. And because we have the springboard with one board where it is only allowed to have had experience with this discipline, our first discipline will only have three athletes participating, and that is Alexander Heitz, Heinz, Dietmar Schliesinger, and Danny Fielwert. In the meantime, let's take a look at the tool and discipline here for Springboard. The axes used in timber sports definitely can't be bought at your local hardware store. Made from special steel, the blade is hand sanded with an angle of 13 to 16 degrees. It's custom built and carefully adjusted for each competition. The weight is around 3 kilos and it's about 80 centimeters long. The blade is so sharp that you could shave with it. Springboard simulates the traditional way of felling trees by climbing up over thick branches. First, a notch, known as a pocket, is chopped into the log. The springboard is then anchored into this pocket. Now the athlete will climb up onto the springboard to chop a 27 centimeter wooden block from both sides at the top of the log. All right, so as I said, the springboard has only three athletes competing in this discipline to start things off with. And we will have Alex Hintz, or Heinz, excuse me, starting all by himself on stage. So this is a tough one for him because he's going to be on stage by himself battling against Mr. Time. Now, the springboard world record for the time is actually held by Dietmar Schlesinger at one. 42.98 so 1 minute 42 seconds 98 so we'll see Dietmar competing in heat number two in the meantime Alexander Hintz up there on stage will be trying to get a clean pocket and set that board and get a quick time here today so object here try and get a quick pocket place your board and go to work on that top block ready Stand, Stand to your, to your timber. timber. Three, Three two, two, one, one go. go. So here are the first drivers to set that pocket. Nice couple of clean hits there. Four hits in, five, six. This is the part where it becomes really critical for these athletes to trust in their ability to set the pocket. The perfect pocket is generally between three and four hits, and the board is placed quickly and making sure that all that slough and junk gets cleaned out of that pocket space. So there you see that metal tooth on the bottom of the springboard there as he sets the board and steps up. Looks like he's got a good stable board and he can get to work on that top block. Now, as you said, or as you heard in the description earlier, that top block has to be worked from both sides, which means that he has to cut through from both sides of the block. Now, it doesn't mean that he can't cut very, very deep on the first side, which is generally how the athletes will do it they'll cut through the first side of the block as deep as possible so that the fewest amount of drivers are needed to get through the back side of the block which is an awkward position to be in especially when you're standing on that springboard now looks like Alex is going to have a fairly big slab come out of there any second now as he gets some nice clean drivers in there as he closes in on the minute 10 second mark here So springboard with one board, as I said, world record 142.98. They have a time limit 
of two minutes and 30 seconds, I believe, to get through here. So his springboard is looking very good. He took a long time to get that pocket set, but he's got a very stable springboard, so he can step well back on that board and push off that back leg. What he's not actually doing here, you can see he's fairly far forward on the board and not using that back leg and the power that he can drive through his hips with as the time now gets past the 145 second mark here. So he's getting pretty deep on the first side. You can see those cuts are fairly all over the place. There's a lot of ridges in there. He's clean from the bottom, but his top driver cuts are not very accurate as he's trying to get through as deeply as possible. A little skip from the ax there as he's cutting in straight now. And it looks like he might be getting a little bit tired. He should switch to the other side any second. And he switches his foot position. And they're choking up on the ax. That awkward ax handle position to hold on and cut from the backside and try and get through there. He's got 10 seconds left to do it, though. Otherwise, it's going to be a DQ. And it's getting very close here. And it might be one or two more drivers to get it done. Can he do it in the time it's coming close? No, unfortunately not. We've got a time exceeded disqualification for Alexander Heinz. And that is really unfortunate for him because he looked really in a good position there on the board. That is a perfectly horizontal board, a beautifully set board. Unfortunately, he just was he took too much time to set the board and he wasn't as powerful and fast on the first side as he had hoped he would be. So we'll take a look at that replay again, but unfortunately we're going to have a DQ here. Oh uh, yeah, and that's dis disappointing for Alexander Heinz right there, obviously, as he is gutted that he got a DQ to start this competition off with. But it's a tough discipline, springboard. And here is where springboard often hangs, lives, and dies from, and that's setting that pocket. If you take too much time setting the pocket, you lose a lot of time getting up into position and making sure that you're working the all-important top lock. His board was excellent, though. He had a really stable, solid board, and I'm surprised that he just didn't feel the confidence to step back out on that board a little farther and make sure that he had that power that he needed to get those drivers into the first side and really clean that thing out. And you could see him checking occasionally the time as he came very, very close. So... Dietmar Schlesinger, intermediate, has the world record for intermediate. And that is a 142.98. Will he be able to best that today? He's going up against Danny Fielwert, who still is marked as a rookie there, but should actually be competing in the intermediate category. And next year will for sure be jumping up into the pro level. Danny Fielvet also has a, a large opportunity here, a very good chance that he could theoretically go on to the World Championship for Germany for the pros if he has very good times across the board and if Danny Martin has some trouble in the competition later today. And there you can see Dietmar will uh, set his top block there with those really, really long screws to stabilize that block on the bottom section where the board or the springboard will be set. So the board for Danny Fielvet, uh, or excuse me, the block for Danny Fielvet is in position and set. So it's just about changing the top block on the already existing stand without having to change the entire stand here as Dietmar, who holds that world record for the intermediates, is putting those screws in place. You can see it that uh, special driver to make sure they get really deep into that block and hold it stable on top. So we'll let them fix that and set it, everything up in uh, place and we'll get this competition underway in heat number two on springboard with one board between Dietmar Schleisinger, Schleisinger and Danny Fielwert.
As I mentioned earlier, you can see all those folks with the yellow hats. Those are fans of Danny Fievet, who will be competing on stage in this discipline shortly. Just a couple more screws to be blocked in here. As, oh, there's some adjustments being made now by Dietmar to make sure that his block is absolutely how he expects it to be on the top there. So this may take a moment or two longer. Okay, it looks like we're getting close to competition time as Danny Fielvet comes on stage after uh, taking a little bit of time off stage to breathe and make sure that he is mentally and physically ready to step up to the plate in this case. And he'll be going up against Dietmar Schlesinger who just finished securing his top block in position. Now, as I mentioned, off of that first Heat with Alex and uh, Heinz in there alone. This time, Dietmar and Danny will be out there battling each other, but also right. the time. Here, Ready. it's all about setting that pocket Ready. and getting in position Stand and going for it. Here we go. Timber. Timber. Three, two, two, one, one. Go. go. Good start by Fielvet as he gets three, four hits there to start setting that pocket. He's quick with the ax, and he's got about six hits to get that pocket in position. Feels confident with that first board as he gets up on top and starts working the top block there already. Great job by Fielvia to get up and really start working away on the top. Schlesinger is now on top, but his board is sagging a little bit, and you can see the difference in these two boards. Danny has got his foot well back on the board, and because of the sag in Dietmar's board, he has to step forward on the board and can't put as much power off of that back foot, and it just seems to be sagging more and more. So he's going to have a big problem as he gets closer to the backside of this block. Fielvet, on the other hand, is doing a fantastic job here. He's in nice and deep. He should switch to the other side any second now. He's had a good pocket, a good board. His board is looking solid there as he is well deep on the first side. And I imagine we'll switch over now. There we go. Switches to the other side. The time is not quite at a minute here. And he's done it in just over a minute. 1.0096 seconds and I guarantee you that will be adjusted down once Competition Control Center gets their hands on it. Schlesinger struggling to get that power to the axe because of the angle of his board. He's working uphill in this case. That is a really rough position to be in for him. So uh, he is just passing 126. I don't know if he's going to be able to make the 142.98 here as he's working the back side of it now. He has a chance to best his own record, but uh, that board, it is just really sagging, and there's zero confidence in a board that's sagging like that as he passes the 145 second mark here. He should be able to do it in under the allotted time, but boy, he is really having trouble on that backside. Uh, final couple of drivers, big slabs coming off that block. That should help him out a little bit, and he gets it done 
in 157, seven and nine. He's not gonna be happy with that, but he's got a time logged in here of 157.79, and that puts him in second place in the springboard results here, just behind Danny Fielwert. All right, both guys are good. All right, so Dr. Jörg Kutzenberger gave us the thumbs up. Both cuts are good, and that means our springboard competition with just three athletes is done and dusted. And we can move on to the stock saw shortly after. So as we take a look back here, and you can see those first drivers. It looks like that might be, yeah, that's Denny Fieldworth's pocket right there. That was about six hits to get his board in place. And right there was just a really brief view of how great Denny's board was. It was nice and parallel. A little bit of an angle is also okay upwards and uh, gives you a little bit more confidence to make those final drivers that you can see there. That last driver from Denny gets him through the block in a solid time of one minute and 0.75 seconds. So no major adjustments there. And that means Denny Fielwert will be atop the rankings so far with Dietmar Schlesinger in second place and Wunderbar Alex Hintz sitting in third place as we move over to the stock saw. Den Athleten, ein äh, Athlet, der ja deutlich unter seinen Möglichkeiten geblieben ist, 15 Sekunden über seiner persönlichen Bestzeit, weil er eben das Springboard nicht so befestigt hat. All right, hat, the staff in the background there, you could see between Marcus and Guido doing a great job to get that stage set up for our next discipline, which is the stock saw. We'll learn more about the stock saw shortly, but uh, this is the original extreme sport that we're witnessing here, and it all started from just a small bet with a couple of guys who, you know, thought one was better than the other. Let's take a look back at the history of steel timber sports. Apropos Weltklasse, es gibt ja weltweit ganz, ganz viele Athleten, die diesen Extremsport betreiben und die das vor allem schon vor vielen, vielen Jahren und Jahrzehnten getan haben. Und wir wollen euch mal ein bisschen in die Ursprünge von Stiel Timber Sports entführen mit ein paar wunderschönen Aufnahmen auch aus ganz, 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 ganz tiefen Regalen des Archivs. Zurück in deine Jugend. Who can cut down a tree more easily than most people can top one up. When it really comes to tackling large lumps, you can't beat the men of the forestry companies. Well, now you know where it all came from and where it all started and to where we're at today. There have been some major steps forward, not only in how these blocks are produced for these competitions, but also in the equipment that these athletes will be using. And speaking of the equipment here for these athletes, take a look at the tool and discipline for the stock saw. Nächsten Disziplin und wollen euch auch hier erst einmal die Werkzeuge bzw. das Werkzeug vorstellen, mit dem es hier in die nächste Vergabe der Punkte geht und natürlich auch die Disziplin als solche. The Steel MS661 CM Stock Saw is used in Steel Timber Sports as the ultimate test of operator skill. Designed for the toughest jobs in forestry, it produces approximately 7.3 horsepower, has a displacement of 91.1 cc, and weighs 7.4 kilograms. To ensure evenly and fairly matched saws, professional steel technicians prepare and test the saws before each competition. Stock saw. After the starting shot, the contestants have to cut two wooden discs 
so-called cookies within a 10 centimeter mark, one downward and one upward. The attempt is only valid when both discs have been cut off completely and within the marks. So Stock Saw will be battled out in six heats. Our first heat will be just one single athlete once again. Vincent Roussel from France will have the stage to himself and be battling against Father Time in this one. Again, because the athletes are on stage together, it doesn't mean that the winner of the heat is the guy that's going to advance onto the next round. This is not elimination. It's all about the time. That's why Vincent or Vincent can be on stage by himself and battle the time because if he does get the fastest time of the day it means that he will be the guy with the most points remembering also that this is a guest athlete on stage and it's about the german newcomers here today hello hello warm up warm up your soul <laughs> All right, the object here, cut two complete cookies off that block in the fastest time possible. Ready. Here we go. Stand, Stand to your, to your timber. timber. Three, three two, two, one, one, go. go. Very nice start by Vincent Roussel. He's got a good thin cookie there. That looks great. Nice transition to the up cut. Another very good thin cookie. How accurate was that set of cuts and a great time of 10.56. That's a national record right there. Wow, that was a fantastic set of cuts. Look how thin those cookies are. That's exactly what they like to see. Thin to win is the rule of thumb. A great job done by the Frenchman Vincent Roussel. Okay, you're coming. Good. Good. That's a fantastic start into our competition here in Stocksaw. Vincent Roussel with a very, very nice 10-4-2 national record for France in heat number one all by himself and no pressure there for the young man. But look at this. Fantastic start. Beautiful thin cut. And on that up cut, man, that was paper thin all the way to the top. That is about as good as it gets from cookie width and thickness. Just fantastic. Good start for him. So now we move on to the next heat, heat number two, with Max Schups going up against Jan Reikert. So. Our first head-to-head -head battle with Max Schups and Jan Reikert. There you see all that mental preparation, all the physical preparation comes down to this moment about knowing the right. saw, knowing the equipment, knowing what to listen for if the saw bogs down, if you're applying too much pressure on the arm of the saw installing that chain or if you're not applying enough pressure to get a good clean cut. So many things playing a role here as Max and Jan get ready to go. Ethi, ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Oh, nice even start by both of them. That is a big fat cookie for Max Schups right there, though, but he's got a great transition to the upcut. The question is, is he inside the line? Jan Riker definitely is. Max Schups, personal best for both of these guys at a 10.73 and a 10.66 with a nice final upcut by Jan Riker on the right-hand side in the green. Great job, and they should both be satisfied with that. Now, it's just a question about whether or not Max Schups had a clean cut on the upcut. He had a big fat cookie there, but it looks like we've got thumbs up for both of these guys. Okay, both cuts are good. All right, so great start there for these two guys as well with personal bests. And uh, we always like to see those personal bests because that means there's improvement happening as the guys progress through their sport. And it's a fantastic thing to have always.
So Max Schups and Jan Reichertz, the first Germans to log in some times, and that means that Jan Reichert, with his personal best time of 10.50, will be the number one athlete in Stocksa so far, and Max Schups with a 10.58 right behind him in second place. Look how calm Jan is, though, during this cut. Barely any transition on the upstroke. Right there, I thought, getting a little close to that line. Lots of room for Jan Reichert there. Uh, but it was good cuts for both boys. Well done. And our next pairing on stage in heat number three, Nicola Oliva from France going up against Tim Antofa. So Tim Antofa with a personal best of 10.96. Nicola Oliva with an 11.18. Will we see improvements for both of these guys? Possibly. Our German commentators are betting that uh, Tim Antofer is probably going to get himself a personal best today. The way that the other two have cut, the way these blocks seem to be cutting at the moment in Stocksaw, could well be. So let's see if that's what actually happens. Warm up, warm up, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Effie, ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Oh, very nice start. Very nice start. Thin cookie for Antofer. Good transition to a thicker cookie. He might have himself a good time. Let's see if he does it. Oh, a personal best of 10.59. And he has done it. Guido Huskin, our German commentator, said he was going to get himself a personal best, and he has done it. Very, very nice job and a good call. Nice job by both of these guys on stage. Nicola Oliva with an 11.30 and Tim Antofer with a 10.56. So four tenths of a second faster than his previous personal best. And that puts him in second place at the moment in the Stocksaw results. And third place in the overall standings. So well done. Little bit of a grip problem there as he reached for the chain break before, but you can see how thin that first cookie was. Seriously risky as he came down to the bottom. It got paper thin, but he managed to have two good cookies. So that was a beautiful first cut by Antofer. The second cut was a beast. Bit of a battle on the uphill stroke there, but he had it and he had himself a personal best time as we go to our next heat with Leon Pesch and Alexander Heinz. So Alexander has some work cut out for him here because of the DQ in the springboard. He is going to definitely want to have a good time here in the stock saw to try and make up for that DQ in his points. Leon Pesch, meanwhile, he doesn't have to worry about that. He wasn't competing in the springboard, but he needs to have a good time here nevertheless in order to get himself in the mix. Okay, warm okay. up, warm up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, Leon Pesch and Alexander Heinz. Effie, Effie ready. ready. Stand, Stand to your to timber. Your timber. Three, three, two, two, one, one. Go. go. Whoa, great start by both of them. Heinz was very quick. Nice transition to the upcut. It's going to be a close one between these two guys, but it's going to be a new world record. A new world record, 10.06. 
for Alexander Heinz. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Alexander Heinz absolutely dropped the hammer on that one in Stocksaw. Previously, the world record was a 10 3 1. He's just cut a 9 9 1 with adjustment. That is an absolutely fantastic run. Okay. Stand one, stand one, two, hunt over the line, line stand two. two. Cut is two. There you go. So unfortunately for Pesh, that's a DQ. He cut over the line. But what an unbelievable cut. And what a return to form by Alexander Heinz with a fantastic time of 9.91. So he just said, everybody thinks that they, they can cut two cookies with a stock saw. No problem, but uh, he said you got to keep a cool head and just uh, keep your mind on the saw and the mind on the cuts. And boy, did he ever do that. A 991 world record. Look at this first cut. Nice position, nice and thin, that cookie. We can see there by Pesh, his transition was a little bit too heavy as he cut over the line on that upstroke. And here, that first cookie by Heinz. Oh, yeah. Beautiful transition to the upcut. And this was so solid, so stable, and he had a beautiful time, fantastic. We have a world record, folks. Alexander Heinz is now the owner of a new world record of 9.91 for an intermediate. So let's see if we can get a rookie world record dropped here as well. The rookie world record for Stocksaw is owned by Edvin Carlson from Sweden at 9.86. Peter Wurzenberger on stage there, along with Danny Fielwert. Danny, one of the favorites here today. Peter, one of the older competitors out there at 41 years of age. you got to love that. Fantastic. And there we see Danny Fielwert with his fan club in the audience getting ready to do some damage to the block here. All right. All right. Warm up. Warm up. Yes, so. Yes, so. See, placing it on that specially designed rubber pad to make sure that the saw doesn't hop away on him. Here we go. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Ooh, very nice start by Wurzenberger, who is quick on there. But he's got one fat cookie. He doesn't have a lot of space for that upcut. A little bit of a miss stroke, but Fielvet has a beautiful thin cookie on the upcut. And he's got himself an 11-3-3. Wurzenberger with 11-7-9. The question is, did Wurzenberger cut over the line? Hopefully not. But Danny Fielvet, that was a nice cut with an 11-3-3. Wow, look at the size of those cookies there by Wurzenberger. Those are massive. Okay, stand one. DQ cut over the line. Stand two. Your cut, cut is good. So Danny Fielvet with a 11-18 personal best. And as I thought... Wurzenberger with the cut over the line. That first cookie was just absolutely massive. Sprinkle on some chocolate chips and grandma would be jealous. Uh, then the upstroke or the transition to the upstroke. You can see here he just had way, way too much cookie there. And then the transition over, a little bit of a mistake and cut over the line. That first cookie from Danny was beautifully thin. And the transition, a little bit of a mistake there. Otherwise that would have been a little bit faster. But you can see two very thin very nice cookies from Denny Fielvet, and that is a great cut for him and a personal best after it's been adjusted. Puts him in fifth place with an 11.18, just 1.27 seconds off pace. And we move to our next heat, Josef Keshek going up against Dietmar Schlesinger. So Dietmar Schlesinger on the springboard, second place there. He'll... Uh, do his best to try and get a good cut in the stock saw. And 
And just speaking about Alexander Heinz, he was the previous world record holder for the intermediates in Stocks on. We just saw, or excuse me, not Alexander Heinz, uh, Dietmar Schlesinger. Uh, he just got the world record taken from him by Alexander Heinz with a 991. That was quite a nice jump in time as well. Uh, that Stocks on world record was a 1031 previously. So let's see if Dietmar can take that back from Alexander. Okay, warm up. You saw. You see Josef Keshek getting his saw warmed up. You can see him putting his hand beside the vent there just to feel what kind of air pressure is being worked through the engine of the saw there. These guys know these saws very well. Here we go. Timber. Three, two, one, go! Quick start by Schlesinger. He's got himself a nice clean first cut. How's that transition cut? Barely any swing at all as he works towards the top. Is he going to do it? No, I don't think so. A 1048 isn't going to be there. But Yosef gets himself a national record with an 11.20 for Czechia. So a good job by Yosef Keshek and Dietmar Schlesinger with a very good time, though, of 10.48. Puts him in second place in the Stocksaw results and in first place in the overall with two good times. Okay, both cuts are good. So it's official. Both cuts are good. And we'll see... A uh, very nice time by Dietmar Schlesinger just behind Alexander Heinz in second place in Stocksaw. Take a quick look at that. Takes a quick step forward to make the adjustment on the pressure of the saw and keeps adjusting his foot position, which isn't necessarily recommended, but it works for him. And whatever works, you got to use. And there you can see that transition to the upcut. Barely any downswing at all. Keeping nice control, still throwing a lot of dust off of that saw. Beautiful cut. So very nice job by Dietmar Schlesinger to get that second fastest time of the day in the stock saw results with Alexander Heinz just ahead. So let's take a look at that uh, standings here in stock saw. Heinz in the top spot, Schlesinger in second, Reichert in third, Tim Antofer in fourth. Max Schups in fifth, Danny Fielwerts in sixth place there, getting pushed down a notch. Leon Pesch and Peter Wurzenberger, unfortunately, both with DQs for cutting over the line. So no points for them in this one. That is a little bit unfortunate. And in the overall standings, we see that Dietmar moves to the top of the points ranking with 14 points, and Denny Fielwerts is sitting in second place with 11. Alexander Heinz just back with a DQ and springboard, though, in eighth. We're in, uh, in third place with eight points. And we're going to go to the stage where we're going to hear from Dietmar right now. So he just said, uh, did he uh, feel bad about losing his world record and wanted to try and get it back? He says, naturally, I wanted to get that record back, but he's happy for Alex. So the question is, uh, being a, a machinist and uh, somebody that works with motors, does he have maybe an advantage with the stock saw? Answer is, yeah, maybe a little bit, but he also uh, likes to tinker around with uh, motorcycles and so on. So having that knowledge of the motor definitely will help him feel how the saw is running in his hands, definitely. But a great job by Dietmar Schlesinger to get himself to the top of the rankings with a second place in the stock saw results and a good springboard. And so that's two times almost uh, being at the top of the rankings and uh, is now at the overall top of the rankings. And we are going to move on to the standing block chop. Let's take a look at the tool and discipline there. Clip. 
Standing Block Chop. At the Standing Block Chop, the felling of a tree with an axe is simulated. A vertically positioned wooden block with a diameter of 27 centimeters has to be cut through from both sides. A powerful and precise swing with the axe is the premise of a good result. All right, so we have our starting order locked and loaded, and we have full heats here now with Vincent Roussel going up against Nicolas Oliva. So the two Frenchmen in heat number one, then back up to the two German athletes battling each other in heat number two with Max Schups and Ian Reichert, and so we go down the line. Now, you'll notice that in the previous heat, we had one athlete on stage alone. This time we have full heats, it's because one athlete is not going to be competing in this discipline based on their experience with the standing block chop and the requirements to have a proper amount of time behind the axe on this particular discipline in order to be able to compete safely in the discipline. So again, safety is of major importance to the Steels Timber Sports family and they take every opportunity to make sure that these athletes are as safe as possible as well as the people that are around these athletes when they're on stage. And that is the reason why we have one athlete not competing or several athletes actually not competing in this particular discipline. That's just one athlete missing in this discipline. So yeah. Heat number one, again, Vincent Roussel going up against Nicolas Oliva. So a bit of country pride at stake here between the two Frenchmen as we get ready to go. All right, all right. Roussel on the left-hand side of your stage on stand A and Oliva on the right-hand side on stand B. Three, two, two, one, one, go, go. The first drivers always have to be from down below and you can see Trying to get some good power into the drivers, stepping off of that back foot. The difference between the two, though, Oliva really driving off of that back leg, using his core power to put that axe into the block as best as possible. There you see Oliva getting some nice chips out of that block as he uses his hand to move away some of the big ones. However, Roussel has moved over to the other side, his block well ahead of Oliva. And even though he's not using the back leg and the core power as much as Oliva, he's working the other side a lot quicker and has moved to the other side well ahead of Oliva. So Roussel has definitely the discipline advantage here as that block looks like it's getting close to being done. And Roussel is close to cutting off the top there. A couple more drivers should do it. And there you go. Personal best of 54.73 for Vincent Roussel. Nicolas Oliva having trouble, though. He moved to the backside of his block very, very late. And he may well be problematic with the time. If he gets to 1 minute 30, he will have a DQ. So he's really got to work hard. And you can see he's getting tired. His drivers are going in straight. They're bouncing a little bit more. They're not cutting clean. He needs to have the angle there. And that's what the fitness level plays a huge role here as he gets in, closing in on the 1 minute 30 mark here. And looks like that is going to be a DQ due to time limit exceeded. And he'll get whistled down there, unfortunately for him. He's going to have a DQ there. And let's see what kind of a personal best we've seen in the past. Well, the personal best is over the time limit here. So uh, obviously this is a discipline that uh, he has been training, but uh, not really having the best time, but it's a difficult discipline to become good at okay, as well. But a great job by Vincent Roussel to get a personal best 54.49. So under the previous minute plus mark for him. So that's a great showing. Nicolas Oliva, still some work to do on the standing block chop again though. Very difficult discipline to become good at and hey, you can see a little bit less of the hips and uh, leg action by Roussel as he was more shoulders and arms. A little bit of a hop right there by Nicolas Oliva on that upper driver coming down into the block. And interestingly enough, the form from Nicolas Oliva was a little bit nicer than Vincent Roussel, but you could see Oliva getting tired as he really worked hard on that first side and just didn't get in very deep and then 
just didn't have the gas on the second side, but uh, Vincent Roussel did a great job there. Heat number two now with Max Schups going up against Jan Reichardt. These two guys on stage with each other once again battling it out in the intermediate category. And again, big shout out to our stage crew for getting that stage cleaned up and ready to go for our next group of athletes to come on stage so we can keep that action flowing and going. So Jan Reichert yet to record a personal best time. So no matter what time, as long as it's not a DQ, he will get a personal best on stage here. Max Schups, um, on the other hand, does have a personal best time of 50.55 seconds. So he'll be aiming to try and better that today. Standing block chop is also one of those disciplines that the athletes come to later in their careers. They'll learn the axe disciplines with the underhand chop first where control of the axe is easier. And here on the standing block chop, you need to have the experience right. of axe position Eddie. and control Eddie. so as to make Stand sure that you and timber. those around you stay safe. Here we three, go. Three, two, two, one, one go. go! Nice start by Jan Reichert, though, as he's looking very good. Schups on the other side. Again, both of these guys, not a really wide foot stance, not pushing off of that back foot and really working the hip through. A couple of straight drivers there by Jan Reichert. As the angle should be a little bit more, you really want to drive from down low. Bring that axe down to your foot level. Max Schups moves over to the other side of his block. He's about, uh, let's say, uh, now six or seven strokes ahead of Jan Reichert working on the backside. There's a little slip right there, that uh, angle of the axe by Max Schups. So this is the issue that we were talking about in the safety is making sure that you really have control of that axe and those angles. It's very important, but... Looks like he's getting close to getting through there. Is he going to have a personal best time? Doesn't look like it as he has gone past the 50.55 seconds. So 55.89 for Max Schups. He is through Jan Reiko just passing the minute mark here, but he's getting close on his second side. He should be through any second now. One, two more drivers should do it. And he blocks it with a personal best of 108.09. So nicely done to get his personal best locked in place. And now... He will have a point to start from on where to work and improve his standing block chop down the road. Okay, both cuts are good. So official, both cuts are good. Jan Reichert with a personal best and Max Schups not getting his personal best, but he's still under the minute mark. So good job by both of these guys. And if I take a look at the standing block chop results thus far, Max Schups with the fastest time. So at the moment, he has the time to beat. And you can see some of those drivers very straight lined in from the lower. The down stroke from on high looking good for both these guys. But the lower strokes not coming from down low around the foot or floor area, but more straight in from the hips. And yeah, you want to have a little bit more angle on those upcuts. And you can also see the accuracy needs to be worked on by both of these guys here as there's some seriously choppy work going on there. But, no pun intended, Max Schups chops through on the back side of that block in a time of 55.62 for the time to beat at the moment. As we move on to heat number three with Josef Keschig going up against Detmar Schlesinger. Joseph Keshek with a personal best time of 39.40 seconds. So as far as standing block chop is concerned, he has the advantage over Dietmar Schlesinger. Aber, or I should say, but Dietmar Schlesinger, his time here, if he can get a good time, will be counted against the German competition, whereas Joseph Keshek here on behalf of Czechia will not be in the mix for the German championship, obviously, but he may well get himself a good time 
on behalf of Czechia. I'm still not sure why they decided to change the way that we pronounce the Czech Republic name to Czechia. I uh, would love to be able to explain that one to you folks out there, but uh, All right. as soon as I find out, I'll tell you. Ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Uh, here we go with some nice drivers by both Keshik and Schlesinger as they're coming from down low to on high and on high to down low. Some really nice hits there. Keshik, his technique is very nice. His alignment or his accuracy needs a little bit of work there. I'm going to try and get the, the picture from Schlesinger's side as he's moved over to the other side of his block already. So our cameraman will have some work cut out for him to see that backside of his cut. So, but uh, Keshig has also moved over to the backside of his block. Some big slaps coming off of both of these guys as they're nearing on the 42nd mark. This is looking good for both of them here. Let's see how uh, Schlesinger does. A few more drivers as that block seems to be moving a little bit there. Keshig. Oh! Schlesinger thought he had it. One more to go. 51-24 for Schlesinger. Keshig not even close to his personal best time with a 55-18. So Schlesinger with a 51-24 has now set the time to beat in under or in standing block chop. Okay. Both cuts are good. So both cuts are good for both of these gentlemen, but at the moment, Dietmar Schlesinger back on top of the rankings overall with 22 points. Let's not forget, though, we still do have two more heats to go with a couple of strong athletes in Alexander Heinz and Danny Fielbert in heat number five. Before that, heat number four with Tim Antofer and Peter Wurzberger. You can see the cut lines there for Josef Keshek. And here, Dietmar thought he had it, thought he had it a second time, and then decided, okay, I need a third driver to get that block off. That's frustrating for an athlete because he could have had perhaps a two-second time difference there and uh, an even better time under the 40-second mark, so or under the 50-second mark. And next up, Peter Wurzberger there on the right-hand side in the blue, age 41. It's fantastic. And Tim Antofer, half his age almost. A couple of personal bests of very, very nice times. Just over 39 seconds for both of these gentlemen. Let's see if they can hold to that today here in heat number four. Tim Antofer at the moment, just with one score in stock size. He did not compete in springboard. Is uh, sitting in uh, sixth place with Peter Wurzberger having a DQ in the stock saw and not competing in springboard. In a really tough position to try and gain some points here down in seventh. All so right, Tim right. Antofer has an opportunity hey, hey, here with ready, a good ready. standing block Stand to move to up in the rankings. Timber. Timber. Go. Three, two, two, one, go. go! So a gentle start by Wurzberger and Antofer both, but both of them now getting into those cuts. Antofer stepping off that back foot nicely. Some nice deep cuts for him on that underside chop there. And there we see Wurzberger. A little bit of a slip as he uh, skipped off of some of that slough in the bottom half there. Uh, big stick as he comes around to the other side. Both of them moving to the other side of their blocks more or less at the same time. Could be a close one between these two as we're closing in. And now Antover seems to be picking up the pace as he sees an opportunity to get through this block a little bit faster. One more driver. Oh, he didn't get it as he wanted it in a 43.92 for Antover. That puts him in second place. Excuse me, first place in the standing block job, second place in the overall. That's a big jump by Tim to move up from sixth to second. And Dietmar Schlesinger holds on to that top spot at the moment. But in the standing block job, Peter Wurzberger with a nice time of 
moves into third place in standing. And Tim Antolfer with the time to beat now of 43.92. But we have a flag on the play. What is the reason? We will try and clarify that for you shortly. So they will go to review the start, I'm guessing, here. It's under review by Peter Wurzberger's stand two on stand B. So it's going to be a check of the timing for the start, I believe. Let's see. So it had nothing to do with the early start. It has to do with something that's known as wrenching. And that means that when the athlete tries to get through the block at the end and twist the axe instead of cutting through, it breaks the block off through a wrenching motion from the axe. So that is what they're looking at right now to see if the cut was through the block as, as with a cut or if he wrenched the block off the top and it has to do with the final driver from Peter Wurzberger. And so they'll look at those high speed slow motion cameras to make sure that everything is fair. They'll come back on stage and we'll get our final decision from Dr. Jörg Kutzenberger. So it is official. It's a wrenching DQ for Peter Wurzenberger. That's a tough one for him because he had a good time, but that DQ will drop him down to fifth place in the standing block chop results. Meanwhile, Tim Antofer with a great time of 45-26 is the man to beat. And let's see if we can get a picture of that wrenching in the slow-mo here. There, Antofer moving over to the other side of his block. It was a really nice start on the second side for both of them. And let's see if we can take a look at that slow-mo. Now that's Antofer, and he thought he had it. Thought he had it a second time, went a little bit high, didn't get cut through there. And that final through driver, and I don't think we'll have that slow-mo from Wurzberger. Unfortunately not, but a wrenching motion clearly was used based on what the judges were saying so that is a DQ as we move to heat number five with Denny Fielwert and Alexander Heinz All right, stage being prepared for both of these guys as they get ready to step on for their heat. It is the final heat in standing block chop. After that, we'll take a look at the standings in the block chop as well as how it affects the overall standings after this heat. Now, if Denny can really put the medal to or the pedal to the medal in this discipline with a personal best of 22 and change, if he can get close to that or better that then uh, he will move to the top of the standing block chop results as well as to the top of the overall results. But he's got to do it first. Denny always looking very relaxed on stage. Alexander Heinz, on the other hand, looks like he might have a little bit of pressure on his shoulders to perform well here. Here we go. Stand to your timber. Three, three, two, two, one, one, go, go. All right, so Denny Fiebert getting into it right away. Alexander Hinz, Heinz on the other side. No slouch either as both of them very good in this discipline. Fiebert moving over to the other side of his block already. Alexander Heinz still looking for those good couple of drivers in the first side of his block as Fiebert is passing the 25 second mark. So he's not going to best his personal best time. But I think he may get through there in a very good time. Yes, he does. In the 31.48. Unbelievable. He's got the fastest time in the standing block chop. However, he does not take over 
the top of the overall standings. He's just one point behind Dietmar Schlesinger. Alexander Heinz getting a lot of support from the crowd there, and he's got a 53-73, so his personal best of 36-35, well passed on that time there. Uh, same thing for Danny Filvet, though. He's got a 31-48, his personal best of 22-11. So both of these guys doing well. So Alexander Heinz, the fourth fastest time in standing block. Danny Filvet, the top time in standing block chop. We'll take a look at the overall results just shortly after we have a look at the standing block chop results. So you can see a great start by both of these guys in standing as he just got into the wood right away. Alexander, I think he was struggling maybe a little bit with those uh, cuts from down below, so those up cuts. And Danny Fieldet, just really accurate with those cuts. And as you say, you know, accurate is quick and, or accurate is fast and uh, you want to be fast here with those clean cuts look at right here those final drivers from Danny Fieldy it's very 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 nice so standing block chop results as we know Danny Fieldy with the top time of 3122 just behind him Tim Antofer and then uh, Dietmar Schlesinger in the top three positions. Overall standings now. Schlesinger still on top with 20 points. But Danny Fielbert just one point back and then seven points back of the top spot. Alexander Heinz. So there is still plenty of room to be played with here with two more disciplines still to come. The single buck with assistant and underhand chop. So, Single Buck will be coming up next. There's a lot of action that's been Szenen happening with the rookies. Uh, we're going to take a quick look back at the action clip from the Rookie World Championships that happened in Vienna this year. Let's have a look back at that. Welcome to the Steel Timber Sports Rookie International World Championship. Right away he gets in there with two nice big accurate strikes on that one side. That was a blistering set of heat from these two guys. Unbelievable. And we're going to go to the next part of discipline. Uh, that is the stock sword. The side of his block. Four strokes. Holy moly! Simon Grunwald has broken the world record here in Austria. Fantastic stuff. Also Timber Sport ist einfach ein super geiler Sport, den ich sehr, sehr gerne mache. So we do know that there's a lot of talent coming up through the rookie ranks. And another man that has come up through the rookie ranks is Marcel Steinkemper. We're going to get to hear from him shortly as he is now with the two guys, Guido and Marcus, in studio. Schöne Marke gesetzt, Marcel. Erstmal ganz kurz zu dir persönlich. Bist du gut drauf und heiß auf morgen? Ja, auf jeden Fall. Deutsche Meisterschaft ist natürlich das nationale Highlight der Saison und da ist man natürlich enorm heiß. Hat viel trainiert und man freut sich richtig. Und ja, wenn ich die Jungs jetzt sehe, Nachwuchs, wo ich letztes Jahr noch mit bei war. So the question is, is he ready for more tomorrow? Is he hot to trot? And uh, the answer is clear. Yeah, it's the highlight of the German uh, Steel Timber Sports season. So he's absolutely ready to go on stage with all the other guys and battle it out. Auftreten ist ja durch die Pandemie im letzten Jahr auch nicht möglich gewesen. Was geht da so in einem Athleten in dem Alter, in dem jungen Alter vor? Also ich habe eben mit den Jungs auch mal gesprochen, die waren alle schon ein bisschen nervös, weil, wie du schon sagst, das ist eine große Bühne hier, tolle Location hier, wir freuen uns hier zu sein. Und für die Jungs ist einer der ersten großen Wettkämpfe. So in the last couple of years, it's not been possible to compete in front of an audience with the uh, pandemic and everything. And the question is, you know, what does that do to a young athlete uh, on stage here? And 
Uh, Marcel says, yeah, it's absolutely exciting to be on stage and the, the butterflies and the nerves are there for sure, but it's fun to have the audience pushing you and, and really uh, giving you that energy to move forward. <laughs> so the question is, uh, Danny Martin is the big favorite for tomorrow. Are you going to attack? And the answer is obviously yes, I'm going to for sure. All right, that's said and done. Let's check out what it is all about in single buck. The two meter long cross cut saw used for the single buck discipline is made especially for competition. A series of consistently patterned 10 centimeter long teeth are cut with a laser on one side of the saw and then hand sharpened. Saw teeth are divided into two types, cutters and rakers, just like on the old school saws. The saw weighs about five kilos and its base price starts at around 1,500 euros. Single buck. The single buck is a one-man saw about two meters long. With this, the athletes have to cut off a complete disc from a 40 centimeter thick wooden block. The perfect interplay between rhythm and strength is the key to success. All right, the single buck. One of my favorite disciplines and we have a full house again here with Vincent Roussel being all by himself in heat number one on stage. And again, going up against Father Time. It's about beating the clock and getting as good a set of points time-wise as you can here. Uh, personal best for Vincent Roussel as a rookie, 24.07. That's a respectable time when we look at the uh, single buck world record at the moment for... The rookies is 9.96 seconds, and the national record is actually held by Marcel Steinkamper of 11.92. In the intermediate, the single buck is 13.36 and 13.87, respectively. 13.36 just achieved at the Nordic Intermediate Cup in 2022 by Victor Klarmo from Sweden. So let's see if we can get some quick times out here. Stand to your timber. timber. Three, three, two, two, one, one, go, go. All right, getting right into the rhythm immediately with a good long pull off the stop. And uh, he's got some nice flow there. That's the big thing about the single buck is trying to keep that flow going. Now he's got single buck with assistant, and that's what they say there is a uh, great time there from 17.79, a personal best for Vincent Roussel. Very well done. I was just mentioning the assistant there. You saw that little wedge of wood that he placed in the top of the block as the saw disappeared in. That's to prevent the cookie from binding on the saw, and it just makes it a little bit easier to keep that flow going in this discipline. Yes, yes. indeed. indeed. You're cutting. You're cutting. Good. Good. All right, so a personal best for Vincent Roussel. Always nice to see that as we keep repeating and repeating and repeating throughout all our broadcasts, a personal best tells us that there is improvement happening every step of the way. Good wood, good saw, good cut, good athlete. There you go. Okay, next up on the single buck, heat number two, we have Jan Reichert going on against Leon Pesch. So these two guys will be battling against each other, but again, it's all about the time. So let's see how they can do here in the single buck discipline. So I don't have any personal best times listed here for them, but at the moment, the time to beat has been set by uh, Frenchman Vincent Roussel. Ah, here we go. Jan Reichert, personal best of 41.94. 
And Leon Pesch, a personal best of 25.20. All right, so position ready to go. Wurzenberger, Wurzenberger out there to help Leon Pesch. All right, All right. Anthony, Anthony, ready. ready. Stand, Stand to your, to your timber. timber. Three, Three two, 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 one, one. go. go. Oh, Reichert struggling to get that saw moving right off the bat. Pesch gets a couple of good strokes in there and then gets stuck again. This is one of the reasons why they call this discipline the misery whip or this tool the misery whip. And now Pesch has got the flow going. He's getting a little bit quicker, a little bit of a bend in there, but it doesn't seem to have bothered him that much as he is really starting to work that saw towards the bottom of that block. He's getting close to it. Is he going to have a good time? He is 25-2-2 and a 27-6-7 by the cut, the last cut by Reichert. And he's got himself a personal best, but he doesn't seem too pleased with the way things went in that one as he was shaking his head, but he can't complain about a personal best in this discipline. Well done by both of these guys. So Leon Pesch with a 25-22, the time to beat. Jan Reichert with a 27-67. That's a very, very nice improvement his, from his previous 41-9-4. And everything looks to be all thumbs up. So we are good to go with these guys as they give each other hugs heading off stage. Very, very good for our first couple of Germans getting busy in heat number two as we take a look at the review. And you can see Leon, a couple of good strokes to get started. Then he got stuck at the top of the block, but then he just got into the rhythm. And here, Jan Reichert, a couple of angle changes, made it hard for that saw to keep moving. We'll see how the old boys do with uh, the commentators competition later on and we're going to keep that one as private as possible so we're not too embarrassed of ourselves all right heat number three coming up max ships going up against tim antofa tim antofa by the way sitting in fifth place in the overall standings just ahead of max ships so these two guys will be battling to try and get themselves up into the top positions they drop down two points because of Oh, they didn't actually drop down at all here. They're, they've been stable in those positions. So let's see how that changes for them once they get some times in in single buck. Antofer wearing the uh, sandals under his shoes in order to be able to come on stage with his spikes on. Now he's wearing spikes in order to make sure that he's got as much grip as possible to be able to really use the push off that back leg. Interestingly enough, though, Tim Antofa, uh, so Max Schups, excuse me, doesn't have those spikes. He is just up there with normal sports shoes. So we'll see how much that affects his performance here. Schul Janssen, one last stroke check to make sure that that saw sits in exactly the right position. And... We'll have Tim Antofer on the stand two, right-hand side of your screen. Max Schups on the left-hand side of your screen wearing the green and yellow shirt, or teal and yellow shirt. All right. All right. Ethy, ready. ready. Stand, stand to your, to your timber. timber. Three, Three two, 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 one, one. go. go. Good start by both of the guys as they get into a nice flow right away. Doesn't seem like any problems at all. Some good skill levels by Max Schups as he's using the whole saw. Tim Antofer increasing the speed of his strokes using the entire length of the saw. And that's a personal best by Max Schups of 17.25. And also for Tim Antofer of 20.13. Great job by both these guys to get personal best dropped as those cookies hit the floor. Very, very nice job. So besting their personal best times by, in Max Schupp's uh, side, two seconds, and by Tim Antofer's side, okay, a good one up. second. So very well done. And the thumbs are up, cookies on the deck, and personal bests are locked and loaded. 
So Max Schups now has the fastest time of the day. And so far, for all the German athletes, we have had personal bests across the board. That is a great sign for these guys. Really nice job. Form and flow was perfect for these guys. And it was interesting, Tim Antofer actually increased the speed of his cuts towards the end, but Max Schoops was just a little bit more efficient on his bottom strokes, and he got through in the fastest time of the day so far. Good job. All right, up next we have heat number four with Nicola Oliva and Josef Keschenk. Nicola Oliva setting his uh, line cut there. Very, very thin cookie. So the advantage is naturally that you have less material to grip onto and bind on the saw as you cut through. However, having a very thin cookie also means that if you twist the saw or if the saw bends in such a way that it could theoretically break that cookie off, which means you need to reset on the tab that's left over to cut the rest in order for it to be a fair cut. So let's see okay. if this Let's works see. to Nicola's Ready. advantage Ready. here. Stand, Stand to your to timber. Your timber. Three, Three, two, two one, one, go! go. Okay, Oliva, quick strokes to get things started and then gets into the long, flowy ones. Keshig. Also working the good length of the saw, very efficient cut so, but Nicola Oliva, oh, gets a little bit of a stopper there towards the bottom, but he's got himself a personal best of 16.99, and he is happy with that. A nice thin cookie, he's done a good job there, and Keshig actually broke his off and had to set and recut and to get the bottom there, and they're going to check that to make sure he's got fair cuts with a time of 24 and change for Keshig. All right, so they're doing a quick check to make sure that uh, Keshek has complete cookie there. It looks like it might be okay, so hopefully he'll get the thumbs up. For these guys, it's about European ranking points. Okay, it's not about placement here, but let's see. Good. Oh, we got lucky on that one. <laughs> Josef Keshek with a very, very lucky last bit to cut off did manage to get done. And our uh, guys do have their points for the European standings. But look at the thin cookie that Oliva had. And here Keshig starting off on his block as well. It's a bit of a thicker cookie. But even with that thicker cookie, he had an angle towards the bottom. So as he got towards the bottom, he uh, twisted out a little bit and had to reset. Maybe we'll see that here. Unfortunately, yeah, right. Ah, we don't get to see that slow-mo. That's too bad. All right, so now we go to heat number five with Alexander Heinz up against Peter Wurzberger. So Wurzberger always right there in the mix with his times. Very, very close to some of the very good times. So let's see how these two guys go up against each other. It's always nice to have another athlete on stage with you when you are battling here because, you know, it just does pick up the adrenaline a little bit. You know there's somebody else pushing you a little bit as well on stage. So you can see Saw is set for Peter Wurzberger as he now positions in his favorite spot for the first drawback. You can see the spike shoes that he's wearing as well. Fully concentrated, getting ready to start the heat here. All right, all right. And you ready, see ready, ready, Alexander ready. Heinz with Stand the position your timber. of a lefty. Three, three two, two, one, one, go! go. 
Heinz with a great quick start there. Würzburger going for the long strokes. Two different styles, both working well and both pretty efficient, but you can see here Würzburger going knuckle to tip. Heinz going a little bit quicker and he's gonna have a fast time. Can he get through it? He does, 17.59. Würzburger a couple of blocks on the way down and a 20.34, not happy about the results there. He's been faster at a 17.03 for personal best. Same with Alexander Heinz with a 16.89 personal best, but he's under the 22nd mark there, so not a bad time. Second fastest of the day, Peter Würzburger with the fourth fastest time of the day, and Max Schupp still with the time to beat a 17.05. Okay, both All right, so just drawing out the tension there. Jörg Kurzenberger playing with the audience a little bit. Yeah, even the uh, referees can have a little bit of fun sometimes up on stage. So let's take a look back here. Look at the start on the left-hand side of your screen by Alexander Heinz. Just quick choppy cuts right there. A long stroke by Wurzenberger. Wurzenberger, excuse me. But you can see how efficient and clean those cuts were once he got into the flow. Knuckles to tips, pretty much. And it was just those fast middle of the saw cuts there. And almost breaking off the block at the end by Alexander Heinz. It got risky, but he got through it. And a nice time. And now we go to heat number six, our final heat in the single buck between Dietmar Schlesinger and Denny Fielwerts. Pretty close personal best times for both of these guys. Dietmar Schlesinger with a 16-16. Denny Fielwert with a 15-06. So real close. All right. So it looks like they're going to change the block on stage to a new block. So let's take a look at the standings in the discipline and uh, perhaps an overall ranking as well with one final heat to go. So the only thing that uh, really can change here is Dietmar Schlesinger and Danny Fieldwith can jump up another spot. Alexander Heinz at the moment with the lead in the overall standings having the second fastest time in the single buck here. Und wir schauen uns mal vor diesem letzten Duell an der Singleback den Zwischenstand in dieser Disziplin an, denn das kann ja durchaus entscheidend sein auch für die Gesamt. So, again the time to beat with Max Schups being on top with 17:05, Alex Heinz with a 17:31, not that far behind timing wise, 26 hundredths of a, or 26 tenths of a second off, uh, and then. Tim Antofer sitting there in third place. Now, do we get an overall standing here? Let's see if we can, and will we do? So, doesn't look like they're going to give us an overall standing, but I can tell you that at the moment, Alexander Heinz, who's sitting second in single buck, is currently atop the leaderboard in the overall standings with Dietmar Schlesinger tied for points. Just behind him, by virtue, though, the fact that he is yet to cut here in this last discipline, so he should jump up in points with Denny Fielwert also jumping up in points after cutting in this final heat. Looks like the stage is ready, so Dietmar and Denny coming on stage now for heat number six, our final heat in single buck. An der Single Buck, Dietmar Schlesinger gegen Danny viel wert. Right. 
Saws are set. Athletes seem ready. Here we go. This is going to be a telling heat here for Denny Fielvert. Ready. Stand, Stand to your to timber. Your timber. Three, three, two, two, one, one. Go, go. Interestingly enough, Denny Fielvert opting not to use spiked shoes. Schlesinger does have a pair of spiked shoes, but Danny Fiebert much deeper in his stance as he gets down to looking like it's going to be a very good time for Fiebert. And he's got a personal best, 13.51. Great job by Fiebert to get the fastest time of the day as well by a bullet. And Schlesinger, a 17.78. Fantastic time from Danny Fiebert. Previous personal best was 15.06 seconds. So he has beat that by two seconds very, very well done by Danny Fielvert, and that is a fast time, fastest time of the day. Great job to be atop the leaderboard with that one. Both cuts are good. All right, so Danny Fielvert takes over the top of the leaderboard there. Dietmar Schlesinger with a fourth fastest time in the single buck, gained some good points, however, and will move to the second position in the overall standings as we look back at some of the highlights from this. And Denny Fiebert almost looking too calm. First couple of strokes, takes a breath, and then right into it with his deep knee stance. Very, very solid push off that back leg. Great form, keeping the flow going. Really nice job by Denny here to absolutely bust his best time to bits and dropping in a new personal best time of 13.22. And he's happy about that one. Look at that. Fan club and the audience definitely loving that one as well. All right, so single buck standings. There you see Denny Fielvert at the top with Max Schups and then Alexander Heinz, Dietmar Schlesinger in fourth, Tim Antofer, Peter Wurzberger, Leon Pesch, and Jan Reichert. No DQs here. Five personal bests overall. So that's sowing a lot. And let's take a look at the overall standings, how that affects things there. So in the overall standings, Fielwert at the top. Schlesinger in second place. Heinz stays in third place there. Tim Antofer moving down to fourth with Max Schups in fifth. Jan Reichert, Peter Wurzenberger, and Leon Pesch, six, seven, and eighth, respectively, for our German competitors. All right. Well, that is all she wrote for our single buck. And that means we have one more discipline to go, and that's the underhand chop as the stage will be set for our final discipline. And uh, also an opportunity for us to talk a little bit about what these guys do in order to improve their skills as time goes by. Of course, they have training camps. And of course, if you're interested, you can also try out Timber Sports yourself. There are some of the training camps that are coming up, 24th of September, also in on the 8th of October and the 5th of November, Melrichstadt in Bavaria in Germany are available, looks like, uh, for the 24th and the 5th of November. You can apply on the 8th of October, completely fully booked. So there is clearly interest in Steel Timber Sports coming up for everybody that wants to give it a try. These are the opportunities. You can jump in as a rookie if you're under 24 years old. You can jump in as an intermediate if you're 25 or older and then work your way up to the pro categories. And these two gentlemen here, we're going to test their medal a little bit later on on the single buck. We're talking about it a lot here, but uh, hopefully we don't make complete uh, idiots out of ourselves. But uh, before that, we've got one more discipline to go for our trained athletes on stage, and that's the underhand chop. Let's take a look at the tool and discipline. Die Platzierung dahinter, die sind natürlich auch noch spannend, aber es kommt zum Showdown zwischen Danny Fielwert und Dietmar Schlesinger und zwar in der letzten Disziplin, in Disziplin Nummer 5 im Underhand Job und der bedeutet folgende Herausforderung. Underhand Job. In the past, the Underhand Job technique was used to split logs. Standing on a horizontally anchored block, the athletes use an axe to cut through a 30 centimeter log. The block has to be worked from both sides.
So there we see our start list. And again, Nicola Oliva will be the lone athlete on stage for heat number one in the underhand chop. And you can see our various national and world records uh, down at the bottom of the screen there. So a lot of work to go on here and the underhand chop as these athletes get ready to go. Nicola Oliva on stage to start things off first. And there you can see the yellow hats, the Denny Fiervet fan club. Personal best, 126.79. So the chopping discipline is definitely not the strength for Nicola Oliva. Let's see how he does in underhand chop today. I cross my fingers that he can get himself a personal best time here as he struggled on the standing block chop as well. Ready. Stand, Stand to your, to your timber. timber. Three, Three two, two, one, one. go. go. Oh, big hammer on the first uh, driver. Got stuck in the block right away. But now he's starting to get into a bit of a flow here. Nicola Oliva from France increasing the pace of those drivers as well. He's got a nice block. It looks like he's doing well on this one. Could he have his personal best absolutely obliterated? The hope is that it will happen as he's gone deep on the first side. Looks good. Should switch to the other side any second now. Maybe one more driver on it. No, he hops over to the other side. Whoa, he's feeling confident on this one. Oliva tries to get through quickly on the second side now as he slabs out a couple of pieces here. His drivers are looking very accurate, which is very nice. And accurate means quick. Uh, now he's uh, slowing down a little bit, getting tired. He put a lot into that first side. Hopefully he can get through in a good time. He's getting close to being there. He should be there any second. Can he get in in under a minute? One more driver should do it. Yes, he's just gotten it in under a minute. 58 6, 7, a personal best by Nicolas Il Oliva. Great job by the Frenchman to completely obliterate his previous best time, which was well over a minute. And now there's a big inspection here. Did he cut into the foothold? If he did, that would mean a disqualification. Oh, my goodness. They were checking that one closely. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. It is a very, 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 very close call as our cameraman has gotten macro close here. I think it'll be okay, though. Let's see if they'll give it to him because this is for okay, European okay, standing okay, points. Good, good. Oh, he got lucky. So no cut into the foothold, but boy, it was paper thin right there for Nicola Oliva. So good job by him to get himself a personal best on the underhand chop. First driver gets stuck. Second driver almost gets stuck. And then he just started to go to work on that block, increasing the pace of those hits. Moved to the second side, and he did a very good job to improve drastically on his previous best time. And it came close to being a DQ because of cutting into the foothold, but it was that thin, literally that thin. But they let him have it. So next heat coming up, Jan Reichert and Leon Pesch going up against each other in heat number two. So Jan Reichert, Jan Reichert looking to gain his first personal best here. Will it be a good time? Will it be over a minute? Leon Pesch with a 107.76 has a personal best time already locked and loaded. So knuckle punches on stage as these two guys give each other uh, a bit of luck and they'll get ready to start their heat. There you see Jan Reichert in the green shirt getting ready. They're allowed to bring two axes on stage. And, uh, if they so decide middle of the heat, they can switch axes the question is would that make sense perhaps if you damage the axe or broke an axe handle then yes um, but uh, if you've got a good flow going you don't want to change that and kill your time too badly so here we go in heat number two Jan Reichert and Leon Pesch Leon Pesch on the right hand side of your stage in the red shirt three three two one one go go 
Jan Reichert right away getting into that block with some quick blows. The frequency of his drivers are much more than Leon Pesch at the moment. Oh, he stepped down while the axe was in motion. That may be a problem for him as that would be a DQ if the axe was swung while he had a foot on the ground. He's going to have to really hope that uh, that axe was fixed in place before he stepped down. Leon Pesch, on the other hand, is still working on his first side here. Jan Reichert has moved over to the other side of his block. And um, I hope for his sake that it's not a DQ because he's looking very good here as he's through in a 38-68 personal best. That is a fantastic time. But the question is, will he have a DQ because of stepping down? We'll have to see if Jörg Kurzenberger throws the flag down on the play. Meanwhile, Leon Pesch still working on his block on the right-hand side of the stage, getting encouragement now from Jan Reichert as he just passes the minute mark. Getting lots of pressure. Hey, there you go, 111.11. Wow, that's a great time. 1-1-1-1-1-1. One, 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 one. That was one too many ones on my side there. So Leon Pesch, so they're checking the footholds on his as well. I don't see any flag on the play. Uh-oh, looks like they've got a cut into the foothold for Leon. No, no, it doesn't look like that at all. No, actually, I think he's safe. Okay, stand one here, cut it, cut it, then two, DQ, cut the foothold. Oh, okay, it was on the other side of the block where the cut on the foothold was, so a DQ for Leon Pesch, unfortunately. Jan Reichert got away with it. The axe was in the block and locked in place as he stepped down and stepped back up. Let's see if we maybe have that in the slow-mos again, and uh, we can really take a close look at it, but unfortunately for Leon Pesch, that is a DQ for cutting the foothold. Big safety concern there as well, and it was on the right-hand foot of his cuts that that happened. And uh, we don't get to see that uh, slow-mo review of Jan Reichert stepping down. But there is the final driver for Jan. Great job. And what a nice time for him to log in as his first ever personal best. So that's a great job by Jan Reichert. So now moving on to heat number three with Max Schups going up against Vincent Roussel from France. All right, so next heat getting ready to go as the stage seems ready and prepared as they come on to stage now. So Max Schups up against Vincent Roussel. Max Schups in the yellow and green there will have stand number one or stand A. And Vincent Roussel will be occupying stand B. Currently, the time to beat has been set by Jan Reichert with a 38.46 personal best. And here we go. Heat number three in the blocks. Go! So Max Schups getting that pace up a little bit. Vincent Roussel keeping pace with him, though, as both of them getting into that first side. Nice and quick. There you see Vincent Roussel a little bit inaccurate with his drivers as he's a little bit all over the place, but moves over to the other side well ahead of Max Schups. Max Schups still working on the first side of his block. Should switch over any second now. He stepped down now twice, but safely with the axe in position. And Vincent Roussel... Should be close to cutting through his block any second as he passes the 35-second mark. Roussel getting close to it. A couple more drivers should do it. It looks like he's through, and he's going to, yeah, make sure. And that's a personal best for Vincent Roussel of 40-54. Max Schups, however, has well passed his personal best time of 46-98. 
as he's trying to get through that second side. And uh, I don't know what's happened here. The time has stopped for Max Schups, but it should still be counting as he hasn't cut through yet. And one more driver should do it. There he is through, but we don't have an official time there yet. Now it's come through. 108.10 for Max Schoeps. That is definitely a disappointing time for him as his personal best was well under the 50-second mark. And now there is checking on the block. And the Frenchman, boy, they've been close to the line there on their footholds on their cuts. So really close cuts by those guys. Okay, both cuts. Okay, both cuts. Good. Good. But they count, so all good for them. Handshakes before they leave the stage, and Max Schups with a 108.10 is currently in second place in the underhand chop standings. So Vincent Roussel with a nice finish on his cuts there as Max Schups struggled to get through the second side of his. And now we go to Josef Keschek up against Peter Wurzburger. So again, for our guest athletes that are here this weekend, it's about trying to get points and ranking in the European rankings. So it's important for them to still have good times, even though they won't be marked with our German athletes here as the German Newcomer Championships 2022 is only for those German athletes. But they still have an opportunity to gain valuable points on the European rankings. So here we go. Peter Wurzberger trying to improve on his day so far. Currently sitting in right. seventh That's place ready. with two DQs. Stand so uh, he's timber. in a bit timber. of trouble. Three, Three two, two, one, one. Go. go. All right. Josef Keshek looking good as he's got some... Nice drivers, very accurate drivers going into the first side of his block. Peter Wurzberger also getting deep inside that first side of the block. Both of them should switch to the other side any second now. There goes Josef over to the other side of his block. And Peter Wurzberger about four or five strokes behind Kessig as he moves to the back side of his block or front side if you want to look at it from the audience point of view the front side of his block second side no matter how you look at it they're working their other side now Keshig looking like he's close to getting through there a couple more drivers should do it Wurzberger also coming close there 47 37 for Keshig he seems pretty happy with that and Wurzberger with a 52 26 that's a good time for him as he is now sitting in second place in the underhand chop results So no change for Peter as he stays in seventh place in the overall standings with the points taken so far in the underhand chop. Okay, both cuts are good. All right, folks, we're getting down to the wire now with our last two heats getting ready to go. Heat number five with Alexander Heinz and Dietmar Schlesinger. Dietmar Schlesinger just on the bubble Two points behind Danny Fielwerth at the moment. Alexander Heinz is uh, about eight points back of the top spot. So I don't think there's a chance of him really jumping up too far here. He could maybe get into the top three if he has a good time. Danny Fielwerth and Tim Antofer will be battling out in heat number six, though, as we take a look at the slow-mos here. And it was... A little bit of a uh, bobble there by Peter Wurzberger as the axe just went in with a lot of power and he lost some of that uh, balance going forward. And there you see Alexander Heinz and 
Dietmar Schlesinger getting ready to go pretty close together with their personal best times. Yeah, a few now, 10 seconds difference between the two. Schlesinger not as fast in his personal best as Alex Heinz. But as we've seen today, a lot of these guys are making vast improvements as they move towards the next level in their timber sports careers. So our last four German athletes coming up on stage. The first heat, number five, Alexander Heinz, Dietmar Schlesinger. Okay, heat number five, ready to ready, go. Ready. Stand, Stand to your to timber. timber. Three, Three two, two, one, one go. go. Schlesinger into it right away. These guys were in sync for the first three, four drivers, but now they start to find their own pace. Heinz looking good as he's getting some big slabs coming off of his block. Schlesinger, the same thing there. These guys both with experience on the underhand chop. And it's now Heinz moving over to the other side about one and a half strokes ahead of Schlesinger. Schlesinger now starting on his backside. Second side of his block. And now the speed is picked up by Schlesinger. Heinz is getting close to breaking through though as he's got a nice one there. It should be done. And that is a time of 35-39 for Alexander Heinz in the underhand chop. That is the time to beat. 3.07 seconds faster than Jan Reichardt and Dietmar Schlesinger with a 42.70 third in the underhand chop. So that is great for these guys. And that pushes Alexander Heinz up into second place in the overall standing with Dietmar Schlesinger. Now with 31 points, the number one spot in the overall. But there's still one more heat to go. That's heat number six with Denny Fielwert and Tim Anthofer. So Tim Anthofer can't really do much damage here in this one. So it's really about heat number six and Denny Fielwert getting a very good time in the underhand chop. You can see in the slow-mo, both of these guys really pushing each other. And it was Alexander Heinz moving over to the other side of his block, about one and a half strokes ahead of Dietmar Schlesinger. But both of these guys with great times, first and third, respectively, in the underhand chop. Okay, next seat coming up, Danny Fielwert going up against Tim Antofa. Definitely the favorite in this heat here, Danny, with a 26.80 favorite. He needs to have better than 38 seconds. He needs to be faster than 38 seconds in order to get points to be the top athlete in the overall standings here for our Newcomer Championship 2022. Denny Fievet looking pretty relaxed on stage as he does a couple of practice swings. Tim Antofa breathing a little bit heavier there, taking a deep breath to try and calm himself before this goes. Here we go. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Oh, big stick by Fievet as Antofa gets the axe moving now, and Fievet starting to get his flow going as well couple of stickers for both of these guys here as they're putting a bit too much power in. Uh, and Fielwert has moved over to the other side of his block, three strokes ahead of Antofer. Fielwert is looking good for the time here as he gets close to 25 seconds. So is he going to get through? One more driver has to do it. Perhaps that's through in a 27.78. Danny Fielwert with the fastest time so far by 1.62 seconds. And Tim Antofer with the second fastest time of 29.40. That is a great job by both of these guys. 
and we'll find out how that's going to affect the overall standing. But it's pretty clear that Denny Fiewert will be your German newcomer champion 2022 with that time in underhand chop. Denny Fiervet shaking his head, hopefully not. Is it an early start or a cut foothold? There's a screen. They're, they're looking at the screens on the side of the stage there. There's some discussion. Dr. Jörg Kurzenberger is looking okay, intently. Okay, so all is good for these guys. And that makes it official. Denny Fiervet will be your... German newcomer champion for 2022. Let's take a look back here at the review. Big stick by Fielwerts right away. Oh my goodness, that got stuck in there big time. But there you can see the transition to the other side. And Denny was three strokes ahead of Antofer as they came to the other side there. And there one final driver as he steps back up to make sure he's safe for it. And he is good to go. Antofer was not that far behind with a 28.96, so only 58 hundredths of a second behind Denny Fielvet with the second fastest time in the underhand chop. So here we go with the results in underhand. Fielvet on top, Antofer in second, Heinz in third, Reichert, Schlesinger, Würzburger, Schöps, and Pesch the top eight. And then let's see how that affects the overall standings here. But I think it's pretty clear how that's going to go. And Fielwert stays on top. Schlesinger with a great day in second place. And Alexander Heinz with another great day. Although he did have a DQ in springboard at the start of the day. Managed 25 points at the end of the day. And sits in third place. And there you see Antofa Schups, Reichert, Wurzenberger and Pesch respectively. Positions four through eight. And we're with Denny on the stage right now. Meister, der Newcomer von Stiel Tilmer vor 2022, Danny Vielwert. Hättest du diesen Wettkampf beschreiben können? Hättest du ihn genauso aufgeschrieben? Auf keinen Fall. Hätte ich nicht gemacht. Would you uh, <laughs> have <laughs> planned these or written these this way? And he says, no, definitely not. Ärgert mich extrem. Hätte ich einfach mal die Geschwindigkeit rausgenommen, weil ich nicht runtergegangen vom Block und er wäre früher weggegangen. Aber so ist auch für mich nicht gut. So he stepped down from the block. He wanted the speed to be a little bit faster, but uh, he had to step down and step back up. So obviously it's a good feeling. You know, he's putting a lot of blood, sweat and money into the sport. And uh, yeah, being the top spot is uh, definitely a good feeling. <laughs> and he's got his son with him who's four months old so obviously that's a really big deal for Denny and uh, yeah for sure happy and look at that he's got his fan club in the audience awesome great job by Denny Fielwert he deserves this one he's battled hard throughout the entire day absolutely fantastic result they'll clean up the stage get our blocks up there so that we can uh, have our award ceremony and then of course the champagne showers and uh, what a fantastic day for Denny Fielwert with uh, good results across the board winning the springboard the standing block chop the single buck and the underhand chop with just a bit of a slower run on the stock saw total of 35 points and a total time of 2 minutes 24.75 seconds he is definitely the master on the day Dietmar Schlesinger also with great results throughout the day he stayed consistent and steady with 29 points 6 points behind Denny Fielweth in the overall and Alexander Heinz unfortunate a DQ on the springboard for him right off the hop but then he stabilized and got everything flowing throughout the day and he was just 4 points behind Dietmar Schlesinger in 3rd place so that will be your podium here today for our German Newcomer Championship 2022 Das ist hier wirklich alles in einem sehr, sehr hohen Sicherheitsmaß betrieben, dieser Sport. Und es gab noch keine abgehackten Gliedmaßen. Das können wir an dieser Stelle vielleicht auch noch mal erwähnen, falls ihr denn wirklich Lust habt, mal zu einem unserer Trainingscamps zu kommen. Das wird auch dort euch alles zur Verfügung gestellt. Braucht ihr keine Angst haben. Gibt es also keine Probleme. Ja, mit dem Zählen haben wir irgendwann aufgehört. Persönliche Bestleistungen en masse. 
ein, ich glaube, absolut verdienter deutscher Nachwuchsmeister. Wir haben es ja vorhin schon gesagt, beim letzten Rookie Cup in Meldrichstadt war es ein DQ, der viel diskutiert wurde, der ihm den Sieg weggeschnappt hat. Dietmar Schlesinger aber auch wieder mit einer Top-Leistung, also die zwei oben auf den ersten beiden Plätzen. All right, discussion between Guido and Mark is still about the, uh, the uh, top performances from all the guys that came and, and were here today, not only the German athletes, but also the athletes from Czechia and France that joined us, Nicolas Oliva, Vincent Roussel, and Josef Keschek to uh, just throw them in the mix to try and gain some points for the European ranking. Um, there's lots of action still to come this weekend. We have the pros coming up tomorrow in the afternoon, so make sure you join us for that because there we are going to be seeing who will represent Germany for or in Germany represent Germany in the individual world championships coming up at the end of October on the 28th and 29th of October in Gothenburg, Sweden. We hope you will join us there on premise in person. Tickets are still available if you want to check that out, but in the meantime we're going to get our stage ready and it looks like I'm looking at the stage from here. I do see champagne bottles on our podium, so we will have a champagne shower to end our day here. A fantastic job by all of our athletes, in particular Denny Fielwert who uh, was so consistent throughout the entire day. And if I look back over the various disciplines, he was number one in springboard. He was number six in stock saw. That's basically the one discipline where he was not so solid. He was number one in standing block chop. He was number one in the single buck, and he was number one in the underhand chop. There's just no denying Denny Fiovet in this particular case, and after a season like this, we'll definitely see him jumping up into the pro ranks. So now, let's introduce all our athletes, or at least bring all our athletes back up on stage one last time and run our award ceremony here at the German Newcomer Championships 2022 here in the Schirke Vorstein Arena in Wernigsrode in the hearts of Germany. So, Nicola Oliva coming on stage now. Next up, coming on stage, Vincent Roussel. And then, of course, our athlete from Czechia, Josef Keschek. Okay, now bringing on the athletes from eighth place up till fourth, Leon Pesch in eighth. Next up in seventh place, in seventh place, Peter Wurzburger. And then after Peter, we have Jan Reichert in sixth place. He's been consistent throughout the day. Only one problem in the single buck where he was a little bit slow. And in standing, block chop needs to work on his uh, accuracy a bit there. But sixth place for Jan Reichert here today. Um, it's a good showing. And he did have himself a personal best in the underhand chop. So that's a great job there. Max Schups up next in fifth place. Single buck, he was very solid getting second place. And in standing, block chop and stock saw also around... The fourth place there, and an underhand chop. He was a little bit down in the rankings, and nevertheless, 
placed fifth. And now Tim Antofer coming on stage in fourth place. And now our top three in the bronze medal position with a DQ in springboard, but nevertheless managed to stay consistent throughout the remainder of the discipline. Stock saw standing block, single block, and underhand. Alex Heinz, your bronze medalist here at the German Newcomer Championship 2022. Handshakes all the way around as Alexander Heinz gives that third place block a bit of a kiss. And I think for him, that's maybe the kiss goodbye because he doesn't want to be in third place ever again. He'll be coming back to battle for those top two positions in the future. You know it. He's got the skills. He's got everything that he needs. And there you go. Third place, Alexander Heinz from Germany. All right, now, second place, your silver medalist, Dietmar Schlesinger. He was solid, second place on springboard, second place in stock saw, third place in standing block chop, fourth in single buck, and fifth in the underhand chop. 29 points, and that is enough today to put him in second place on the podium, just ahead of Alex Heinz. <laughs> saying thanks to all the staff members in the back as well. Just wants to say thank you to everybody. But he is now in that second place position on the podium, receiving his silver medal. All right. And there you go. Dietmar Schlesinger, second place. Well done for him. But today definitely belonged to the man on the top of the podium. Four of five disciplines, he was the winner. And the only one that struggled a little bit was the one in Stocksaw. But he is your German newcomer champion 2022, Denny Fielwert. 35 points, first place in four of five disciplines. There was no beating him today. He absolutely performed fantastic throughout the day. Stable, consistent solid and strong and as the favorite he definitely performed up to par and beyond Danny Fielwert your German newcomer champion 2022 And I would say Denny Fievet is definitely ready to jump up to the pro ranks. 25 years old, a meter 87 tall. He is a big man. He has the skills, as we saw here today, to definitely compete among the best in the world. And now the champagne shower has expected just the... And now our women are going to come out there and join. Or at least Nina Pokoyski gets to have her champagne shower as well on stage. That was uh, not allowed earlier because there was another competition following and for safety reasons. But she got to come out there and that is of course fantastic. So there you have it. The German women's champion and our newcomer champion on stage. For one final celebration. What a day we've had today, folks. We hope you've enjoyed everything that's happened here at the Steel Timber Sports German Championship. There's been a lot going on, and it's not over yet. This weekend is still full of action. One final picture on stage there today. I'll sign out and let my colleagues Guido Huskin and Marcus Phillips say goodbye to our German audience. We hope you guys have enjoyed this German Championship 2022 here from the Schirke Feuerstein Arena in Wenigerode in the beautiful Harz area of Germany. Till tomorrow, everybody, I'm Troy Mannering signing off from the little black box. I'm going to go and stretch for 
the single buck competition of the announcers. Bye, everyone. Ciao, and I'm out. Im Livestream. Wir zeigen euch noch mal mit ein paar Ausschnitten aus den vergangenen Jahren, was morgen hier auf dieser Bühne in Wernigerode zu erwarten ist. Also die erste deutsche Meisterschaft als Profi natürlich ein Highlight für mich. Die größten Konkurrenten momentan sind auf jeden Fall Marcel und Danny. Auf die muss man immer Auge haben. Ich denke, ich muss geschlagen werden, nicht ich wie anderen. Deutsche Meisterschaft sind natürlich möglichst weit vorne zu stehen. Ein Podium wäre natürlich ein Träumchen. Und mein Ziel für die Deutsche Meisterschaft ist, dass ich äh, meinen dritten Titel hole. Ja, ähm, Gänsehaut. Gänsehaut. Schon stehen Sie wieder die Herrsch. Die müssen wir gleich mal rasieren mit den Äxten, diese Haare, dass sie nicht immer so zu Berge stehen können. Spaß beiseite. Wir freuen uns also tatsächlich auch beide sehr, sehr auf diese Wettkämpfe, auf diese Disziplinen morgen. Dann auch, wir haben es ja eben gerade auch gesehen, mit der sechsten Disziplin, die wir heute noch nicht sehen konnten, weil sie eben bei den Damen und beim Nachwuchs nicht zum Sortiment der Disziplinen gehört. Dann auch mit der Hotzer. Da wird es richtig heiß, wie der Name schon sagt, und vor allem richtig laut. Also, ihr seid herzlich eingeladen, morgen wieder dabei zu sein. Um 13 Uhr. Und bist du schon fit jetzt für die Single Buck? Hast du dich schon Ach, aufgewärmt? Ja, komm, du hast es, äh, du hast es vergessen. Ja. <lacht> nein, nein, nein. <lacht> äh, wir äh, probieren das gleich noch. Ob ich dann morgen wieder bereit bin, weiß ich noch nicht. <lacht> äh, was auch immer. Heute war großartig. Und das sind die Highlights des Tages. Danke. Ja. Bis morgen. Ich wir hoffe, ihr seid uns. wieder mit dabei. Bis dahin. Macht's gut. Ciao.